fail, as well as some of the world's best tailgating. But there's a hurricane warning today here at Lane Stadium as we renew the rivalry. It's Virginia Tech in Miami now. ESPN's College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy, brings us to one of college football's most wonderful stages, Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, an old Big East rivalry that now calls the ACC home. It's the Miami Hurricanes and the Virginia Tech Hokies. Hi again, everyone. I'm Bob Washusen here with Bill Curry, and Quinn Kesnick will join us in just a moment. And, Coach, rivalry week, it's about these kinds of games, isn't it? This is a, a rivalry where both teams have taken a pleasure in ruining each other's seasons of the They love to compete. The last home team to win was Virginia Tech here in 2003. But the Miami Hurricanes came up here in 05, played a Virginia Tech team that was supposedly headed for a national championship opportunity, and they didn't just beat them, Bob. They whooped them. I mean, a whooping 27 to 7. It was the worst beating I've ever seen Virginia Tech take in this stadium. What that means is anything can happen today. There's that old saying in football, when you have two quarterbacks, you don't have a quarterback. Well, I guess Frank Beamer would disagree. He has two quarterbacks today. Frank Beamer doesn't want to disagree, but he has to now. Sean Glennon began the season, and he didn't play extremely well. We'd have to call his tale the tale of two seasons. Early in the year, he struggled. But when he came back and more recently played, especially in his performance against Georgia Tech, he lit it up. Five touchdowns, no interceptions in his last two games. But the man that comes in after him, true freshman Tyrod Taylor, cannot be described numerically. Words like genius. He simply knows how to throw a touch as he does with Justin Harper there. Third and 31, what do you call? You call Tyrod's number, so he runs for a simple 38-yard gain and a first down against the Seminoles. Sprinting to his left, he flicks the ball 60 yards and again to Harper. The only way to describe this guy is prodigious. The one thing we know about Tyrod for sure is that when he goes on the field, everybody in America wants to watch. Well, starting for the rest of these couple of games here, it's wrapping up the career of Kyle Wright as the quarterback at the University of Miami, and it has been a tumultuous ride, to say the least. You could call it the little shop of horrors for Kyle. Certainly, he could have played a little better himself, but his center has snapped the ball on the ground repeatedly. His receivers have dropped balls. The protection has not always been the greatest. If they correct those deficiencies, they could be excellent on offense right away. Well, Miami has struggled to score points all season long, and they're going up against one of the historic defenses in college football. Every year, it seems Virginia Tech is in the top couple in points against. This year, no different. It should be a good one. And again, behind us, I'm sure you can hear one of the great atmospheres in all of college football. Virginia Tech and Miami just about set to take the field. It's senior day here in Blacksburg as well. Arguably the greatest senior class in Hokies history is about to come out to what has traditionally become a crowd riling phenomenon here in Blacksburg. It's Enter Sandman and the Hokies. I play my very best for you.
things are now meeting at the center of the field. With a Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, one of the great scenes in college football. You just saw why. It's Miami and Virginia Tech coming up in just a moment. Welcome back to Blacksburg. Virginia Tech won the toss. They have deferred, so Miami will start with the football first on senior day here at Lane Stadium. Joe Dunleavy has the ball on the tee, and we are underway. Bruce Johnson from the 10. And he's brought down at the 25, always superlative special teams for Virginia Tech as we take a look. And a man we just talked about, Kyle Wright, Bill Curry, he has struggled this season. He has struggled ever since being arguably the highest recruited quarterback in the country the year he came out. It's really a difficult thing to understand, and people see it as a decline in the program, but a lot of things go on in coaching changes, and the quarterbacks are the ones that have to rely on everybody else to succeed. And Miami opens up in the gun. One of their fullbacks, Jarrell Mabry, at the bottom of your screen. He's the widest of three wide receivers. Right, under pressure. We'll tuck it under. And he gets popped after a couple of yards as we check the Miami offense with their basketball coach, Frank Hayes. For the Hurricanes on offense, uh, at running back, sophomore, Jer Javaris James, known as Baby J. Uh, do all back, catch, run, block. Uh, offensive line guard, Derek Morse, senior. Uh, been very consistent all year. The lineup brought to you by Best Buy, three wide receivers, and Javaris James to the left of Kyle Wright on second down and eight. And a fumbled snap. Look at the expression on Kyle Wright's face. This ball is snapped hard to his left. That doesn't look like an errant snap. But the ball should be floated back. It should tumble back, literally. And it should be easy to catch while looking down the field with peripheral vision. First big mistake early by the veteran center, a senior, John Roachford. I'm sure all the fans in South Florida are rolling their eyes right now going, boy, here we go again. Third down and about 17. Right well protected, comes underneath, has a connection with Sam Shields, well shy of the first down. And it's three downs and out. Oftentimes we will see that Virginia Tech defense force a team three downs and out. Yeah, they're one of the they're second best in the nation at that, second only to Troy down in Alabama. But that was a significant completion there. As small as that seems, it didn't get the first down, but it was a throw and catch. That's what Miami needs. Eddie Royal, who was a question mark as to whether or not he was going to play, is back to receive, and he gets out to about the 39. Well, Sean Glendon will start at quarterback. However, we're going to see two quarterbacks. Today's starting lineups brought to you by Best Buy for the Virginia Tech offense. Their basketball coach, Seth Greenberg, apparently he has a preference as to who he wants to see out there at quarterback. Frank Beamer's Hokies are led by freshman sensation Tyrod Taylor at the quarterback position. He's joined in the backfield by Brandon Orr, one of the ACC's premier running backs. At the wide receiver position, it's Justin Hopper. He's coming off a career best effort against Florida State. And up front, it's a mountain masquerading as a man. Dwayne Brown, 6'5", 305, senior left tackle. Good field position on first down and an end around. Eddie Royal has the left sideline. A first down into UM territory for Virginia Tech, although Frank Beamer may have to get with Seth Greenberg and have a conference. He starts Sean Glennon, the quarterback, and apparently Seth, he's going to start if he had his choice, Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, well, he doesn't have a choice. Uh, that's one of the nice things about being the football coach, and <laughs> Seth did a nice job, and I did not do a very good job in warm-ups. I came back up, and I told you, Royal looked like he was moving very gingerly and we probably wouldn't see him unless he was needed today. So apparently he's fine and it's already perceived that he's needed. First and ten at about the 42. Brandon Orr's first carry. He gets to the perimeter. Out of bounds at the UM 20 yard line. This is just poor contain on the part of the Miami defense. A very unusual thing to see from the Hurricanes on defense. You see being pushed outside, Eric Moncour, a missed tackle, and simply bounced to the outside by Orr. We hadn't seen much of that from Orr in recent 
Actually, haven't seen a 100-yard game from him since last year, Bob. He's been banged up. And we were told by Brian Steinspring, the offensive coordinator, that the last two or three games, the first time this year, where they've seen Brandon Orr of last year. On first down, lobbing one, out of bounds, and coming back in was Josh Morgan. So he would not have been able to catch that ball regardless as we check the best buy starting lineups on the defensive side of the ball for Miami, again with Frank Hayes. Now on defense for the Hurricanes. At one defensive end, uh, Calais Campbell, who's had an outstanding year. Uh, someone has not has got as much publicity. Uh, Eric Moncour, who's a big part of our defense. And at defensive back, Kenny Phillips, who was one of the hardest hitting defensive backs in the country. Uh, already, we have seen the quarterback switch. The super freshman, Tyrod Taylor, in the game, runs a counter handoff to Orr. And he's inside the 15, down to about the 12 yard line. It'll be third down and two. Joe Joseph and Kenny Phillips combined on the stop. As we check our city X Factor, and coach, not only the two quarterbacks a big X Factor today, but also the U playing like it. Absolutely. We talked to Macho Harris yesterday. We said, well, do, well, do you think you guys can be overconfident? He said, oh, no, this is the U, and we know they are the U. Now, they got to play like the U, in which to Randy Shannon means they got to survive the first quarter without getting blown out, without being way behind. And they need to get a stop here and force the field goal with him. They'll have to do it without Kenny Phillips. He just looked to the sideline. Or brought down shy at the 11-yard line. Joe Joseph held the point of attack. And now an early decision for Frank Beamer. Do you go for it on fourth down and a half yard just outside the 10-yard line? A very big decision because of the fact that Virginia Tech has dominated their opponents 76 to 30 in the first quarters this year. They love to put people away, demoralize the other team. Here came Glennon, so they're going to go for it. Sean Glennon comes on with the big uglies for Virginia Tech. Fourth down and a half yard. They need to get inside the 10 to pick up a first down and the push with the quarterback sneak. And Sean Glennon does indeed pick up the first down. Very important how the quarterback executes this play. Many quarterbacks can't do it. Glennon is perfect. The pads go down behind those big rear ends, and he drives his legs. It's almost impossible to stop a surge like that for less than a half a yard. We mentioned Kenny Phillips is out. Levon Ponder has come in to play at one of the safety spots for UM. So Phillips, a Jim Thorpe semifinalist, is out of the game right now. It's Orr to about the four-yard line. Maybe the three before he's finally brought down. It'll be second down and goal. Brandon Orr was a first-team All-ACC selection as a sophomore. This season, about half the yards he had last year. He again is the eye back though on second down from inside the five. Or Powell drives his way into the end zone for a Virginia Tech touchdown. Nice job up front by Bo Warren, Sergio Rinder, Nick Marshman, the big guys in the middle just coming off the football. Nice trap block, Marchman kicking out on the defensive end. That's Moncourt and a gaping hole. Or oh, delighted to see that. Tough sledding this year, but a nice touchdown drive here. Well, it looked like he was delighted to see Colin McCarthy as well as he took the outside linebacker for UM and drove him into the end zone. The point after is perfect. Virginia Tech has a 7-0 lead. Off to a great start, the Virginia Tech offense. Brandon Orr gets them on the board early. Tech with a 7-0 lead. Virginia Tech with the early 7-0 lead. Miami already in a spot where their mentality is going to be tested. With more on that, here's Quinn Kesnick. This Miami team has been backed into a corner, Bob, and Randy Shannon is facing the toughest challenge of his young career. After the embarrassing Virginia loss a week ago, he had some strong words for his team. 
everybody is going to judge you on the type of character you have the last two games. If you shut it down, they'll know the type of people you are. If you shut it down now, when you leave college, you're always going to be losers. If you build your character through this athletic program, you will be successful in life. And the word quit is not in Randy Shannon's vocabulary. Well, there's no question that he is someone that for a long time as a coach embodied everything about UM football. And here's Demarcus Van Dyke trying to give UM some field position. And he's bounced out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. As we take a look at that quote, we were just hearing Quinn talk about coach. And, you know, Randy Shannon, as we said, he is everything historically that UM football was always about. A UM linebacker, top 10 defense, five out of six years, national championship defensive performance. Born in Miami, understands the mentality of the Hurricane tribe. He'll not be intimidated by anything. That you can count on. Mabry motions. A hitch to the near side with Mabry trying to pave the way for Sam Shields, and Shields got about three yards. Brandon Flowers came up to make the stop. Tight ends and a pair of wide receivers. Javaris James, the lone setback for UM on second down and seven. From their own 29. To the ground and James. Stays on his feet, picks up a couple of yards. Let's look at this defense for Virginia Tech. Presented by Best Buy again with Seth Greenberg. Bud Foster's lunch pal defense is one of the nation's elite. Ten of the 11 starters come from the Commonwealth of Virginia. The defensive line is led by Cat Quick, Chris Ellis. At the linebacker position, the X-Man, Xavier Adibi, looks to leave Lane Stadium with a win and a chance to play in the ACC Championship game. The corners, Macho Harris and Brandon Flowers, have eight interceptions, two for touchdowns. And as always, Virginia Tech defense, every play is key. Well, Coach, another key play, third down and five, incomplete. The intended receiver, Darnell Jenkins, was lying on his face as the ball sailed over his head. Three downs and out again for UM. That play could almost be used to epitomize the frustration of the Miami offense this year. There's a wide open window. You see the Virginia Tech lunch pail there. Good gracious. Three and out 53 times this season coming in. We'll make it 55, folks. Royal lets it bounce, gets a charity hop, so it's returnable. Finds a crease. Eddie Royal horse collared about the 43-yard line. Ryan Hill made the stop on special teams, but not before 20 yards brought back by Eddie Royal. Looks like Sean Glennon will be the quarterback when we come back. Presentation of college football brought to you by Best Buy. This holiday will help you put together perfect gifts. Saturn with five totally new models. It's just something to rethink about. Saturn and Clean Exchange, a disposable head electric shaver, new from Remington. Great field position once again for Virginia Tech. They already have a seven nothing lead over Miami and coach they're right back near midfield they are they got great field position you can Eddie Royal is a factor in this game already with his reverse run and now with this punt return and it turns out to be Tyrod Taylor a quarterback after all play action Taylor looks to escape the rush will he tuck it under a first down for Tyrod Taylor a gain of 12 as we check in in New York with Matt Weiner all right, Bob, Ohio State's Chris Wells is our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week after 39 carries and a career-high 222 yards, a couple of scores. The Buckeyes' big win over Michigan. To cast your vote, text the word VOTE to 87654 on your AT&T wireless phone. Matt, thanks very much. Out of the game comes Tyrod Taylor. Right back in coach Sean Glenn at a quarterback. One play, 12 yards for Taylor, and Glennon gives for Orr. Blockers out in front. About seven more yards. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I guess why do you ask, Coach, does Frank Beamer decide to go back and forth between the two quarterbacks, Tyrod Taylor? Well, he certainly gets it done on the ground and through the air, but Glennon played well in his absence. He played extremely well after he got benched. He said to me, I found out how much I love playing. Sitting over there was a terrible thing. So he is a little more focused, perhaps, than ever before. Glennon to throw. Checks down underneath and has a first down. Josh Hyman for the UN 33. Brought down by Willie Cooper. And just to continue with that line of thinking, being here for the very first game on September 1st, East Carolina game, with all that emotion, Glennon was not the same guy. What you see now is a guy with quick feet who delivers the ball on rhythm, who knows exactly what he's doing. He looks so much more assured than he did early in the year. And I think it is a matter of he realizes, I better do this or I may not get back out here. It's got to be hard for these young men as well. The quarterback position, unlike any other, as Orr goes up the middle for a couple. Glennon said that when they started to transfer back and forth in and out of the game last week against Florida State, he noticed that every time he ran in the game, the PA man here at Lane Stadium said, back in the game goes Sean Glennon. And he'd come to the sideline, the PA man would say, here comes Tyrod Taylor, like Tyrod Taylor's heading into the huddle right now. You know, they don't do that for any other positions in football. When they change offensive guards, the PA guy doesn't let everybody know. He said they don't say Nick Marshman just came in the game. <laughs> Welcome to QB City, buddy. Second and ten, play action for Taylor. Around the face mask and a drop by Greg Boone. One of those UM defenders got a little piece. It might have been Eric Moncour, the face mask of Tyrod Taylor. And let's head down to Quinn. Bob, when we spoke to Brian Steinspring, the offensive quarter, uh, coordinator about the two quarterback system. He said totally uncharted waters here. There's no guidelines. There's no manual they can turn to. It's all trial and error. Communication on the sideline in the huddle is key. The main fear he has is that this offense will become too predictable because each quarterback has their own uh, set of plays that they're going to run. Uh, the, the kids have been terrific about it. They say they're not competing against each other. They're just trying to win the game. Uh, he did mention, and I want Coach Curry to uh, expand on this, he said there were some landmines. It just wouldn't tell us what they were. Well, the landmines, and you're right, he wasn't about to tell us what they are. But it's not hard to deduce what he means is if the defense can get a bead, can draw a bead and know exactly what you're going to do. When Glennon comes in, they're going to throw the drop back pass. They're going to hand it off to Orr. They're going to run the stretch and they're going to occasionally do a little boot. When the other guy comes in, you're going to get the read option. You're going to get throwing the ball down the field. You're going to get him sprinting on the corner. If the, if the defense can zero in on that, then they can really do a much better job against you. So Steinspring has the obligation to break those tendencies every time he puts the guy on the field. And uh, when you do that, then the defense is not sure. That's what it is. Well, Sean Glennon started every game last season, has started five so far this year. The Hokies at eight and two and five and one in the ACC and poised to head into next week's game against Virginia for the Commonwealth Cup and a divisional title in the ACC. Funny looking formation with trips way out to the right. Morgan motion slowly. And a hole found, soft spot in the zone of the 19-yard line, Josh Hyman. Plenty good enough for a Vatek first down. First of all, you've you got to notice the fact that the protection is wonderful. Plenty of time to throw the football against the stunting defense of the Miami Hurricanes. They're driving two defensive linemen in and looping a defensive end. Don't get there in time. Hyman, excellent concentration. The throw wasn't perfect, but he came down with it. Zone, Virginia Tech, Tyrod Taylor right back in quarterback. Quarterback draw. Taylor gets inside the 15 yard line before he's driven back. And Randy Shannon had some goals for today for UM. Well, I had the remarkable advantage of getting to talk to Randy on the phone this morning. And that doesn't normally happen in a big game like this, but he was kind enough to give me a call. We had not been able to hook up. He said, We've got to get out of the first quarter without being way behind. And here we are. This is a very significant stand for his defense, needless to say. The other thing is we just can't turn the ball over against the Virginia Tech team. He said, if we can do those two things, we'll win this game. But right now, that's a risk. Four wide receivers with Sean Glennon back in at quarterback. A tipped ball. Oh, a dangerous throw. Behind Eddie Royal. Luckily for Virginia Tech, there were no white jerseys near the deflection. Now sets up third down at about six. 
And near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. What does Glennon bring to this game? It should be his specialty. Unerring accuracy. The last two passes have not been good passes. One call, one drop. Third down and six. A chance for UN's defense to get off the field. Lobbing one into the end zone. One-handed catch made by Justin Harper. What a completion for a touchdown. If the last two passes weren't exactly what was wanted by Frank Beamer, I don't think he'll complain about this one, nor will he complain about the catch. What an incredible concentration effort by Justin Harper and Sean Glennon. What that is is thousands of hours of working together. That doesn't just happen because of skill. Harper had five catches for just shy of 170 yards and a touchdown last week in the win against Florida State. And now he's got a touchdown catch here in the first quarter, courtesy of Sean Glennon, who threw a perfect lob pass, setting up Harper for the highlight reel catch. And Virginia Tech with a two-touchdown lead. College football presented by Best Buy. And this is all part of Rivalry Week presented by good. Remington. A 14-0 lead for the Hokies here in the first quarter against the Hurricanes. Ryan Hill and Darnell Jenkins back deep to receive the kick. And this will be a short kick coming down across the 10-yard line to Jenkins. Stops, reverses field. He's going south instead of north. And stumbles his way out to the 21-yard line. As we head back for a Vizio update with John Saunders. The Sports Center Minute powered by Vizio indeed. Ohio State and Michigan, 104th meeting. Beanie Wells, 62 yards on this run, had 222 on a sloppy track as Ohio State clinches a berth in the Rose Bowl. Meanwhile, Missouri looking to remain with just one loss when they face Kansas next week, beating up on Kansas State right now late in the fourth quarter. John, thanks very much. And so far, it is... Virginia Tech beating up on the Hurricanes here in the first quarter. Not much there for Javaris James. Let's take a look back at a beautiful touchdown a moment ago. Now you may think that we're looking at Tom Brady and Randy Moss here. No, this is just a couple of college guys, right? That's Sean Glennon and Justin Harper who just look like they've been professionals for 10 years. What a beautiful effort. And again, that's the result of many, many hours of work together. That's what football's all about, teamwork. Toss in the sack of Kyle Wright, and so far Virginia Tech is out rushing Miami, 84 yards to minus five. And a flag comes out as the play is blown dead at the line. Crossing snap, full start, 11, offense. It's a five-yard penalty, still second out. Miami in very serious trouble right here, I think Randy Shannon was exactly right when he said we just simply cannot get blown out in the first quarter. Well, they've been blown out in the first quarter, and they're going backwards on offense. Unless they can put together a drive here with four minutes to go in the first quarter, but second down and 15 at their own 16. So the struggles continue for Kyle Wright, who threw 94 yards and three interceptions last week in the blowout loss as the Orange Bowl was closed to Virginia. Comes down underneath and gets some of that yardage back to Ryan Hill. It'll be third down and long. Vince Hall came up to make the stop as Hall's back from injury. Vince Hall back from injury is not good news for Miami. And here's what Virginia Tech is going to do. They're going to spread the field. This is a blanket. This is literally an umbrella as you see it here. It's a two deep with a three deep. You see the three deep underneath, the two deep on the hash, with both corners having the capacity to go to the deep outside. So they let you throw underneath. They come up and tackle and get a third and nine. Bud Foster told us that Vince Hall is the best football player he's ever coached. And here comes a monster blitz from Virginia Tech. Jason Worlds and Cam Martin combine on the sack, and the punting unit about to come out for UF. 
And just as you begin to think you've got an idea of what they're going to do, here they come off the corner. A clean blitzer. There's got to be an answer. You've got to have a blocker for Cam Martin, number 41. You see him coming from the left of your screen. No answer by the Hurricanes. A good kick, though, chases Royal all the way back to the 30-yard line. If he gets seven yards, he's got a new single-season ACC punt return record all time, and he just got across the 40 to about the 42-yard line, good for about a 12-yard return. So there's the best punt return man in ACC history, Eddie Royal. And this year, well, he leads the ACC, averaging about 16 and a half yards per punt return. That is a big chunk of yardage for your punt return man to consistently be giving. I have always thought that the punt return guy was the toughest guy in the sport of football. Making the long snap, especially when we were doing it, when people were pounding us on the head, we thought that was tough as centers. But I'll tell you, I don't know if I would have the guts to stand back there and do what Eddie Royal does. Again, great field position for Virginia Tech. Tyrod Taylor back in the game. Comes underneath, has a connection for a gain of about five yards to Kenny Lewis. Brought down by Willie Cooper. It'll be second down at five. And Eddie Royal, one of seven children, <laughs> and he's one of the least impressive of the seven. He's got a sister who was the regimental commander of the ROTC unit here at Virginia Tech and now is a cadet at the Air Force Academy. Everybody in his family is equally impressive. They all sound pretty tough, too. Oh, they're wonderful. Second and five. Lewis again, the primary tailback. Play action. And keeping it is Taylor. In the open field, Tyrod Taylor out of bounds with a first down. Tonight, ESPN and ABC team up to bring you two great college football games. First at 7.45 Eastern. ESPN with a critical game of the Big East, West Virginia and Cincinnati. Then at 8 Eastern on ABC, Sam Bradford and Oklahoma will try and clinch the Big 12 South when they take on Texas Tech. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines. All part of Rivalry Week presented by Remington. ESPN and ABC tonight. Sean Glennon back in at quarterback. Play action. Underneath. Carlton Weatherford. The fullback dragged down by the face mask. Probably tack on 15 more yards as Demarcus Van Dyke will be guilty, most likely for a personal foul. It is so much fun if you're Brian Springsteen when everything you call is working. <laughs> and then you get tacked on with face mask. Let's see what the call is. Let's we, we presume that was the call. We'll see. Yep. You got another one right, Bob. You never miss. You've taught me well. Yeah. That's what it yeah. comes down to. All some of some of the the sear the yards rubbing off. Five yard incidental face mask. <laughs> the, the fans are furious. Uh, Here's the rule. If you put your hand on and then take your hand off and don't jerk the guy's head off. They're not going to give you 15 yards. All right, that's exactly what happened. You think? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Take another look. We don't want to watch this too many times. Do we? Looks like he still has so, a hand uh, of the DeMarcus, face mask because he's DeMarcus throwing it down. is a true freshman from Miami, and uh, he will be coached by Randy Shannon to do that a little more gently with the face mask. <laughs> Contact in the offensive line, and the Hurricanes think that they were drawn off. Well, that's mandatory. The defensive linemen always point at the offensive. When the offensive linemen begin to applaud, you know what that means? That's not All good five. news for the defense. Defense, number 54. It's a five-yard penalty. It's the first down. That's what you do. So you teach your offensive linemen to applaud. To Raz McCray. Which induces the uh, umpire <laughs> to give, it, give you the call. Sure. So it's still Sean Glennon at quarterback. At least for one more play. Tyrod Taylor always poised on the sideline to come right back in. First and five. Play action for Glennon. He shows some mobility. Throws it towards the pylon incomplete looking for Eddie Royal. And there's Taraz McRae providing pressure.
second down and five. Lennon stays in to the air once again. Has a first down. Josh Morgan. Inside the 15, out at the 13-yard line. And for an update, let's go back to Matt Weiner. All right, Bob, let's get you a Taco Bell update from Oxford, Mississippi. A crazy start to number one LSU and Ole Miss. The Rebels return a punt for a touchdown on the ensuing kick. It's Trendon Holiday, the NCAA national runner-up in the 100 meters. 98 yards, no problem for him. 14-7 there. And Missouri has finished off Kansas State 49-32. Try catching that little guy. Kenny Lewis caught a wallop at about the 13-yard line from McCray. You know what, Therese McCray, number 54 there, made a hit, and that's the first stick that I've heard and seen that looked like a Miami Hurricane defensive stick today. I mean, that was a pop. That was feet moving, driving through the shoulder pad. There, there's just got to be something picked up on this Miami team. Therese McCray always gets a hard time from the defensive line coach, Clint Hurt. Hurt's quote was, he's got a rear end the size of a woolly mammoth. <laughs> and McCray, part of the group that stuffs the hole along with Tavares Gooden is Tyrod Taylor. Lost a couple of yards. And when McCray is kidded by the coaching staff about having a rear end the size of a woolly mammoth, I think was the quote. <laughs> he always laughs about it, but. Yeah, right. You get a kick out of it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, his mama doesn't get a kick out of it. And now that it's on the air, the coach is going to get an email. <laughs> That'll take us to the end of the first quarter. Virginia Tech in control, 14-0. The Hokies have the lead. The Hurricanes trying to breathe some life back into their season for Randy Shannon. But the faithful here at Lane Stadium saw a touchdown early from Brandon Orr and a great catch from Justin Harper. It's the season to shop, and the Red Tags are coming back for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag event. And right now, they're bringing the best values of the season. Look for the Red Tag and get 0% financing for 60 months on remaining 2007 Pontiac, Buick, and GMC models. That's 0% financing for five full years on all 2007 cars, light-duty trucks, and SUVs while supplies last. The Red Tag event. See some red, save some green. Hello, I'm a Mac. In the left corner, coming in at 80 gigs, hailing from office desktops everywhere, PC. Okay, what what's going on, buddy? Well, your sales are through the roof. I'm showing the people I'm not going down without a fight. PC, this isn't a competition, okay? Some people just want a computer that's simple and intuitive, that works the way they do. Actually, my brother-in-law just got a Mac and loves it. Tomorrow, the American Music Awards are on ABC, and here's 10 reasons not to miss them. Rihanna, Maroon 5, Avril Lavigne, Fergie, Audrey, Chris Brown, Jonas Brothers, Duran Duran, Alicia Keys, Rascal Flatts. Here we are, baby. They're all performing, and here's one more reason to watch. A special appearance by Beyonce. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the American Music Awards, live tomorrow, 8, 7 central on ABC. Start here. Finally, a shopping experience you will love. The Nissan year-end sales event. The perfect time to shop for a more versatile bed, for 317 horsepower, and the longest bed available on a crew cab. The savings are truly special, like 5,000 total cash back on Titan Crew Cab or Titan King Cab. Now is the time to shop for your new Nissan. And now through December 3rd, get $500 holiday bonus cash on most Nissans. See your Nissan dealer now. Monday at 5, uninsured cars going from this to this. What a picturesque day in Blacksburg on a very picturesque campus. If you've never been to Virginia Tech, trust us, it feels college everywhere you go. And the Hokie fans see their team again dominate a first quarter. Yes, they do, and you're already deciding to send your kids here on, on our way over to your thing. Yeah, I can take our kids in here show up over here what what randy shannon did not want is exactly what has happened here we're just about to begin the second quarter and here's virginia tech back down here with 92 yards rushing to minus 15 for miami 150 yards passing to six for miami wow and there's a chance they could score again third down and 12 a must stop for the hurricane defense and they get that stop mccray 
up the middle. That's his sixth sack of the season. Have not thought of McCray as a guy that could take over a game, but he has really made himself a force in this, in this football game. You watch him as he loops inside. Number 54 on the, what's called a tackle in move, TE. He lined up in a spot that he doesn't normally line up. All good news for the Hurricane, and now they need to try to block this kick. 40-yard field goal attempt for Ken Dudley. It's on the way, has the distance, and it's right down the middle. A moral victory, though, for the Canes defense. They forced three instead of allowing seven, and it's 17-0 Virginia Tech. Ted Dunleavy so far this season now. 15 for 18, and another special moment today on this Virginia Tech campus. With more, here's Quinn. The Hokies thank the world this morning. About 9,000 students, people from the community, faculty members, uh, members, they gathered at the drill field this morning and they spelled out the words, Virginia Tech thank, thanks you. Uh, it was a message to everybody around the world who showed their support after the events of April 16th. The event was sponsored by the Department of Geography. The human greeting uh, was photographed from the ground, where our camera was, by helicopter, by airplane, and by satellite. You can actually log on to the web. It's HokiesThankTheWorld.org and see photos. 9,000 people. The healing process is slow here, but Blacksburg is appreciative. Uh, Quinn, it was a great scene, and they expect to have the pictures on their website up later today that were shot from space. And it was actually a faculty member that laid out his own money, about $2,500, to try and get the project off the ground. The satellite they expected was going to pass over Blacksburg, or at least take a picture of Blacksburg, in about a 15-minute window. So they needed everyone basically to stand still for those 15 minutes. They did, and it should be a great scene. A satellite picture, thank you, Garth. As Darnell Jenkins tries to turn the corner, again gets tripped up back at the 20-yard line. Nice tackle made by Matt Reedy. And there's a flag down as well. This is my third trip to Virginia Tech since the tragedy. I had the privilege of being here for their first game September 1st, came back last week. And uh, I have never seen a community rally this way. And it's not about football, although football is a small part of it. On the return. Here's the call by the official. On the return team, a block in the back. Ten yards, first down. Uh, it just gets worse for UM. A block in the back will put them inside their own ten-yard line. It does. But what happened was a football coach here, Frank Beamer, took it upon himself to encourage his team to move among the students and be conciliatory and be a part of the healing process. And that's exactly what's happened off the field. On the field, they have improved throughout the year. Players even told us that the start of the year, they felt like they were more than football players, like they were somehow responsible for trying to lift the entire campus up. And now things are starting to get back to normal. Dragged down is Deron Thomas at about the 10-yard line. Here's Matt Weiner with an update. All right, Bob, a Verizon wireless update. Missouri is taking care of it. It's part of next week's showdown with Kansas. The Jayhawks also off to a great start. Todd Reesing has hit Dexton Fields twice for scores, 14-0 there. Look at the bandy score. A Tennessee loss today would give Georgia the SEC East title. Matt, thanks very much. So Kansas in control. What a scene that should be next week at Arrowhead when they take on Missouri. Getting pounded at the line again is Deron Thomas. Chris Ellis, who's had a magnificent year, a senior from Hampton, Virginia, made the stop, and there's a flag down once again. Well, there's a bailout call for Miami, a personal foul against Virginia Tech that will give Miami a first down out to about the 25-yard line. Looked like maybe it was Macho Good Harris, ball. number one. Number one, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Now, Macho is not so called for no reason at all. He's a feisty guy. It's hard to, yep, he's coming up to protect his buddy there. But this is what always happens, and he's just a sophomore, and he's still learning. When you retaliate, even if you're helping your buddy out, you're the one that's going to get called, and you're the one that's going to go over and have to speak to Coach Beamer. Replaced by Carmichael, Rashad Carmichael, number 21. First and 10, UM. 
at their own 27-yard line. Kyle Wright, well protected, a deflected ball though underneath. Xavier Adibi jumped over the top of Sam Shields and knocked it away. One of the things that makes the zone defense so effective underneath for Virginia Tech, even though they're known to be a man coverage team, but their linebackers are so quick and so active, they break on the ball and they either pick it off, knock it down, or knock your receiver down as he tries to catch the ball. Very skilled, Vince Hall and Adibi, as well as Brett Warren, who's played well in the absence of, of Vince Hall. Second and ten. Right by in some time. Comes to the sideline. A strong throw on the run and a drop. In and out of the hands of Leonard Hankerson. Are they going to call that a reception? The officials come together. It did look like Hankerson had control as he came out of bounds. And now it is ruled incomplete. I think that's the right call. And I'm surprised there was even a debate. Every now and then you get in a stretch with your football team where absolutely nothing goes right. Miami is in that. It is devastating. It is hard to break yourself out of it. Virtually everything that can happen does. Hankerson with normally reliable hands simply does not catch the football. He had it. Somehow it got away from him. It was not forced. And watching the tape of the game last week against Virginia, three interceptions thrown by Wright. How many drops were there? And two of the interceptions were basically drops. They were deflected ball interceptions. Goes for a big play to the outside. This time, the ball is hung on to as Sam Shields makes a play for his quarterback and picks up a Miami first down. Here's what happens when you protect your quarterback. This is an all-out blitz. You'll see everybody coming here, literally, after right, nice twist move up front. It all looks good, but it's picked up beautifully by the offensive line and by Javaris James stepping up to pick up the free safety who was coming Cam Chancellor right up the pipe. You expect him to be clean. Nice job of stepping up by Kyle Wright and delivering the first down throw. You can see at the bottom of your screen, number one, Macho Harris is back in. And flags are down as the UM players head to the sideline. Substitution offense. I broke the huddle of more than 11 players. The rule is you cannot break the huddle with more than 11 players. If somebody runs in the game and somebody fails to come out, the 12th man steps into the huddle or the 13th, as the case may be, and then you break the huddle and somebody, like a covey of quail, somebody goes to the sideline, that's a foul. A what now? A covey of quail. I'll explain. There is no penalty on the field. Miami called a timeout. Prior to the ball. Okay, you heard the official. If you call a timeout, you realize you got a problem. Your quarterback's alert, or the coach, or whoever calls the timeout, and then you break the huddle, you're clear. For the rest of the day, you just have to understand you got a city guy from New Jersey next to you, the Covey of Quail. Covey I'm, Covey I'm doing my best. <laughs> we'll call. 17 nothing, Tech. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Back at Lane Stadium here in Blacksburg. It's all Virginia Tech here in the first half. A 17-0 lead over Miami. Miami has the football, though, helped out by a personal foul penalty called a few plays ago on Macho Harris and a nice throw by Kyle Wright to Sam Shields. They have a first down near midfield and a high throw made to Dar Darnell Jenkins into Virginia Tech territory, a bullet thrown by Wright. It's another UM first down. This is beautiful work by Darnell Jenkins, and once again, excellent pass protection. You see what Wright is capable of under the right circumstances. Uh, remember, Jenkins is the same guy that slipped and fell early in the game. He had trouble with his footing this time, but he maintained his balance, turned inside, concentrated, and actually made the catch. Well, Darnell Jenkins has really been the big play guy if there has been one so far this season for the UM offense. Into Virginia Tech territory for the first time. To the ground to Deron Thomas. Brought down by Barry Booker. Watch Jarrell Mabry, number 41, as he runs out to his right. Going in motion here. He's a fullback. He's a big guy. He's a 240-pound guy. You think, what's he doing running out there like he's a wide receiver or a flanker? They've got him out there for a reason. They'll throw a slip screen, and he'll be the blocker. And it should be a mismatch between him and some corner. That's the hope. Right on 
on second down. A drop once again. This time it's Sam Shields. And now it's time for this afternoon's Aflac trivia question. It's a good one. Frank Beamer is the fourth coach in career wins among active coaches. He has 206. Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno, of course, are one, two. Who's number three in between Frank Beamer, Bobby Bowden, and Joe Pop? That's not hard. Not for a fanatical football fan. Here's a very important third down for the Miami Hurricanes. Third down and eight. A four-man rush picked up by Miami. Right up the seam. Again, a high throw. And again, it's Hankerson that climbs the ladder and grabs it at the 20-yard line for a first down. What we're seeing here in this game that we have not seen in recent games is excellent pass protection. Look at the stunts. That's two TEs, tackles outside, defensive ends coming inside. Everybody across the front, Derek Morse, Reggie Youngblood, Andrew Bain, John Rochefort doing their job, and the quarterback delivering the football right on the money. And guess what? Leonard Hankerson caught it. Well, Hankerson atoning for a drop earlier. As Wright fights his way to the 20-yard line, another Three-man rush, a four-man rush to the outside. It's Deron Thomas. Out of bounds inside the 15. Run out by Xavier Adibi, but after a seven-yard gain. What you see with the running backs, you can see inexperienced. Deron Thomas, even though he's a junior, what you don't want to do with this Virginia Tech defense is to think you can make two or three moves and then dart up the field. Every time you see somebody on a kick return or in a situation in the open field who makes two or three moves, gets run down by a DB or Hall, boom. Second down and three. To the ground. Nothing there. Swamped under Javaris James. He broke the tackle initially of Chris Ellis, but he couldn't get away from another three Hokies. And now it's third down and long. And a reminder, you can catch the 2007 MLS Cup on Sunday on ABC. Taylor Twelman, the New England Revolution, get a rematch against last year's, of last year's Cup against the Houston Dynamo. The Adidas MLS Cup 2007 on ABC Sunday at noon Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Third down and six. Nickel defense, Rashad Carmichael in for a linebacker. Was Jenkins in motion. Right. Tucks it under and he'll go down. Lost the football. Oh, it would be devastating for Miami if they came away with no points. Barry Booker looked to be the first to get to Kyle Wright. Did UM get the football back? They did not. It's a fumble recovered by Virginia Tech, and it looks like Chris Ellis comes out of the pile. Much to the delight of Frank Beamer. This is what Virginia Tech loves to do. They want to get you down early, and they want to take your heart away. They want to knock the ball loose. That was calculated. Barry Booker on the tackle. Knocked that ball out. He punched it out with his fist. Perfectly legal move. Number 59. Watch him. Right there. Great job by the alert defensive work of Barry Booker to get that ball out. So Booker comes up with the play on defense for Virginia Tech, and UM comes away empty after they had it second down and three at the 13-yard line of Virginia Tech. Brandon Orr for a couple of yards out to the 20-yard line. And bear in mind, too, that that turnover, which was the second item mentioned by Randy Shannon, that they could not afford turnovers, he was exactly right. But that came after a really well-executed drive. They got a break on a personal foul, Macho Harris. So they got out and got some decent field position. Then they began to throw and catch. The protection picked up. Nice job of securing the football, and then they give the ball away. But Kyle Wright threw four or five very pretty passes on that drive. A couple of them were dropped. Sean Glennon tucks it back under and goes down at the 15-yard line. Eric Mucker with the sack and about a six-yard loss. Don't ever forget that the University of Miami is playing with superior athletes. Moncourt is cut to the ground here, does not go down, refuses to go down, catches on all fours. This is a drill that defensive linemen do. 
and he's right back up in the quarterback's face. And this is where Glennon is vulnerable. He's a big, tall guy. He's got decent speed and agility. But Tyrod Taylor, very tough to tackle in those circumstances. That's the 29th sack this season for Miami in 11 games. Glennon underneath, knocked away. Intended for Josh Morgan, charred free by Chevis Grant. So Miami's defense does the job. Miami's defense has got to do this again and again and again. Chevis Grant made a nice break on the ball. That was a mistake. That was a mistake by Glenn and a poor read because he threw the ball into coverage, meaning Grant could break up on the ball because he had deep help. When you see that as a quarterback, you don't throw the ball in that threatening because that could have been plucked and run in the end zone. Virginia Tech punt will come from just inside their own five-yard line. Knocked out by Brent Bowden, and it takes a hokey roll into UM territory and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. What do the New York Yankees have to do with Virginia Tech? Why do the Bronx Bombers have a soft spot in the Hokies' hearts? We'll tell you when we come back. I went shopping yesterday in the Hokie bookstore. And you can pick up a New York Yankees hat in the Hokies colors, if you so choose, if you head to the Hokie bookstore. And the reason? Well, in the wake of what happened back in April, of course, with as terrible uh, a tragedy as you'll ever have on any college campus, the worst school shooting in American history, the Yankees donated $1 million to the recovery effort after the school shootings here at Virginia Tech. As a result, they sell Yankees hats and Hokie colors in the bookstore here in Blacksburg. I just hope I can escape with this one. I've already been asked for it several times. I love it. Good field position for Miami, and it gets a lot worse. And a fumble. White lost the football on the way down. He'll be ruled down by contact as he was dropped by Ellis back inside the 35-yard line. Miami. So if you're the New York Yankees organization, well, you will have a soft spot in the hearts of Hokie fans forever. Well, there was a call made to the Virginia Tech offices right after the tragedy saying, we're going to do something to help. And, and of course, nobody had any idea that they were thinking a million dollars and come here to play an exhibition game. And uh, it just, it really does warm your heart. That's right. In March, at the beginning of spring training next year, about halfway through spring training, the Yankees are going to come up here to Blacksburg and play an exhibition game against the Virginia Tech baseball team. A knockdown. Once again at the line, this time it's Orion Martin that comes through. As much notoriety as the secondary and the linebackers have gotten for these outstanding Virginia Tech defenses of Bud Foster through the years, the defensive ends have probably been the key, and we've seen in the last couple of plays exactly what happens when Chris Ellis and Orion Martin use their athleticism to abs absolutely take over a game. Third down, and 18. Here comes the blitz. Right. Unloads down the sideline, looking for the big play, and he's got it. Sam Shields inside the 20-yard line. Right beat the blitz. Sam Shields takes on the best corner on the field. Brandon Flowers right here. He's going to freeze him and then go. And the minute he gets even with him, if we can stop it right when they're even right there, he's got him. You can see just that little spread. It's hard to draw. That's all you need if the throw is perfect. Kyle Wright, while being hit, a beautiful throw and catch. And this is what Miami is capable of doing. A 46-yard game. And UM right back in the red zone. Boy, do they need points before halftime. Down 17 nothing. This time a four-man rush. Wright tucks it under. Fights his way down to the 11. It's second down and two. Cut down by Vince Hall. This is not a calculated quarterback draw. This is Wright showing his experience and showing his courage, frankly, with the kinds of linebackers he's playing against. He sees it open up. You see, Jackson does a nice job of turning. I mean, Jabaris James does a nice job of turning and getting a piece of somebody when he realizes his quarterback is following him down the field. Second and two at the 11. 
Handoff to James. A cutback lane to the left. He's inside the five. It's first and goal for Miami. The tight end Chris Selner helped steal, seal the edge and allowed James to get inside the five. Number 88, Chris Zellner did a beautiful job here. He came in motion. This is the H-back type of block. You'll see him come from left to right across your screen. A beautiful job knocking down Orion Martin and clearing the way for the first down and close to the goal line. First and goal, Miami. James down at the two. Xavier Adibi made the stop. UM powerful enough to simply run the ball in from here, or at some point does it have to go in the air? They're powerful enough to run it in, but they've got to stay on their blocks and they can't allow penetration. Right, may be changing the play. They clock down at eight. Hand off James. Gets to the one. It'll be third down and goal. Let's check the answer of our Aflac trivia question quickly. Again, Frank Beamer, fourth among active coaches career wins. Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno are one, two. Who's number three? Am I allowed to say it now? I think you're allowed to reveal the answer. Jim Trestle at 208 after today with the big win over Michigan. And they can have a, a lot fewer wins. What a marvelous career Jim Trestle has had and what a marvelous person he is. Third down and goal at the one. The pitch out. James cuts it back. Shut down at the one yard line again. Xavier Adibi with the stop. Now what? Everything you've ever heard and read about the goal line where men are proven is true. And here's a DB showing what he's made of. He's the backside backer, essentially the free safety in a gap eight defense. There's no blocker for him. You don't want a DB to be unblocked because he will stone your back at the one yard line. That's what happened. Since the year 2000, Virginia Tech's defense has allowed 62 offensive touchdowns. Fewest in the nation. And Miami lines up to go for it on fourth and goal outside the one. James, does he get there? He is right at the goal line. The extra effort, they have to undo the pile. This is a very difficult moment for officials. Those officials are right on the spot. They're on the goal line looking down the vertical plane. If that ball has broken the plane, it's a touchdown. If not, this is what happens. If he came up short, it was by an inch, and that's what the officials have ruled. Randy Shannon's face says it all. Actually, the play was reasonably well blocked. Look at Vince Hall holding his ground against the big 300-pound lineman. That made the difference right there. You saw number nine. Watch him come up, stone the offensive lineman for the big stop. According to the officials, that's how close Miami came to breaking the play and scoring a touchdown. Review, while we were away, held the play up as whistles blow this play dead at the line as Sean Glennon sneaks forward for about a yard. Here's another call. Cross to the snap. The left game. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. <laughs> Still first down. Half the distance, wow. about an inch and a half. But that's let's go back bad, to the last that's play. That's a bad mistake right here. Do you, if you ever doubt the officials, these officials are usually right. Now take a look. We're going to get an unusual shot. Watch 84 as he turns. We'll be able to see, actually see the football. And, and, and James is stopped. Now there's the ball. He stopped here. That ball did not break the plane of the goal line. As they keep it rolling, though, you can kind of see the ball sneak forward another inch. Sometimes they let that play at the goal line go just a hair longer as Glennon comes up short on this pass attempt from the end zone, intended for Carlton Weatherford. It'll be second down and ten. And, you know, for a second, we were looking at those replays while we were away. I thought there was a chance that they might say he was not down yet, laying on top of other players. The ball appears, and maybe it broke the plane. Well, the rule says this. So first of all, there's a forward progress issue. Second, there's whether or not his knee had touched the ground. If his knee had touched the ground when that ball is where we saw it, then it's not a touchdown. And that's the official's judgment. They have to make that call. Glennon just trying to sneak his way out away from the goal line. 
with 3.20 to go before halftime. Now it's going to be third down and close to 10. A reminder that coming up, the Capital One halftime report is on the way as we'll be heading back to New York. Virginia Tech with a 17-0 lead, but the Capital One halftime report right now about three minutes away. Obviously, if Miami gets a stop here, they're going to take a timeout to give themselves time for another drive. I think they should have taken a timeout after this down because a lot of seconds are running off. Virginia Tech's going to let it run down and then take a timeout of their own. They may not even take the timeout. <laughs> they might just stop. No, they're, they're going to take <laughs> take half the distance and back up a foot. They don't want to give up that 18 <laughs> inches, buddy. No, they did call timeout with 2.45 to go. You're watching ESPN on ABC. 25 greatest players presented by IBM getting it done. We're up to number nine, Rogers Staubach. Number two and number one both announced on ABC on New Year's Day. And boy, how do you pick out of that group? I don't know, but I had the privilege of hiking the ball to Roger in the college all-star game, and that was great, great fun. Glennon on third down out of the end zone. Well protected. A home run ball. It's a jump ball, and it floats out of bounds. So the Miami defense again does its job, and they will force Virginia Tech to punt from the end zone. Well, that's the good news about going for it on fourth and short at the goal line. If you don't make it and your defense does its job, now Virginia Tech's going to be forced to punt, not just to punt, but to punt without getting in their normal formation. They've only got 11 and a half yards with which to protect their punter. This will probably be a return. It usually is, rather than attempted block. A kick fielded by Darnell Jenkins at the 42. Weaving his way to the 30-yard line. So a good return by Jenkins. Great field position for UM as we take a look at the Pacific Life Game Summary. The Pacific Life Game Summary. Touchdown run by Brandon Orr early in the game, showing that power that he displayed so often last year. And then just perfect execution between Sean Glennon and his favorite wide receiver of the last few weeks, Justin Harper, who made a one-handed stab at the back of the end zone. But the Canes have turned things around to a certain extent here in the second quarter. They had six yards of offense in the first quarter. They have 113 in the second quarter. And they get some more as Ron Thomas drops the ball. Oh, I spoke too soon. It looked like an easy swing catch for Thomas, and he simply dropped it. That has plagued Miami all season long. We did our X factors for these two teams. We talked about Miami's the X factor for Virginia Tech that has not been a problem is fine focus. Well, Miami is not fine focus on the tip of the football, looking it in and making catches on a consistent basis. Kyle Wright has thrown the ball better here in the first half, and his numbers would lead you to believe, and he checks down underneath to Ryan Hill, and Hill picks up about six yards, so it'll be third down and four, coming up on two minutes to go here in the first half. It's Miami and Virginia Tech, an ACC battle here at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. I'm Bob Wachusen with Bill Curry. Quinn Kesnick with us here as well. Miami at 5-5 five and five this season, 2-4 and four in the ACC. A different story for Virginia Tech, and 8-2 and 5-1 and one in the ACC. They have a great chance to get to the championship game. Over the middle of Bobble Ball this time, it's held on to by Ryan Hill, and that's good for a first down for UM. It's just amazing. Even when Miami catches the ball, they tend to have a hard time doing so. And you think, well, maybe it's because of the cold weather. But they did the same thing last last week in the Orange Bowl in their swan song in that ancient stadium. I got them down for three drops unofficially today already in the first half. First and ten at the 16. Wright has time. Again comes underneath this time a low throw intended for Hill. That one at his knees, and he couldn't hold on. Well, Wright has come under so much fire from the UM fans and the media. I mean, he was recruited the same year that Reggie Bush and Jamarcus Russell and Brady Quinn came out. He was, in some services, the number one recruit, but he's gone through three offensive coordinators in his four years and hasn't had those great UM wide receivers we've always known. Second down, dragging across the middle, it's Hill. A gain of six. 
Monday Night Football on ESPN continues next week in the Finn Aaron and Vesco at Mile High. Vince Young and the Tennessee Titans take on Jay Cutler and the Broncos. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 with Monday Night Countdown. And Miami has spent a timeout and stopping the clock with a minute 10 seconds to go before halftime, facing third down and four. But, Coach, when you look at everything that Kyle Wright has gone through, not having those weapons we've always known at Miami and the coaching changes that have taken place, three different offensive coordinators in four years. How would you sum up the struggles that he's gone through? Well, I would sum it up this way. Uh, and I don't know the young man, but he's terribly gifted. He's tough. We've seen him today stand in there, take hits, deliver the ball accurately. He's 11 out of 18 for 146 yards. You give him back those three drops, so then maybe he's 14 out of 18 for 175 yards, which is a wonderful day under extremely difficult circumstances. While being hit on most plays, the guy's a good football player, but in, in, in football, the quarterback needs everybody else to do his job. He certainly needs his teammates to do their job here on third and four at the 10. Under pressure, Wright stays on his feet, fights his way to the nine. But Miami's going to have to settle for a field goal. You know, he, I, I mean, I think you're right. I think they're going to settle for a field goal attempt here, but I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. They're at the nine yard line with a chance to score and maybe the points, the three points are more important as a morale factor, but they need touchdowns to win this game. Francesco Zampogna on from 27 yards out. And the Canes are on the board. A flag down on the play though. And it would be a first down if it's against Virginia Tech and it is. Here's one of the oldest discussions in football. Do you take points off the board to keep a drive alive? You got 29 seconds. My answer for Miami in this situation is absolutely. You take the penalty and see if you can get a touchdown before you go in the locker room. And that is exactly what they'll do. They'll send their offense right back on the field, and they will have in 29 seconds with the timeout as well, freedom still with their play calling. They could still run the ball in one of these plays in this situation, and they'll have it at about the five-yard line. I don't think they should run the football, but they, if they've got a run that they feel good about, that they think can go in the end zone. I guess my point being with 29 seconds to go, that if you're Virginia Tech, you can't necessarily flood the end zone knowing that they have to throw Virginia the football. Virginia Tech's in trouble. They can't get a defensive signal in the game. A DB's down there signaling, tell me what to do. Finally, he called something. Right. Pump fake. Right into the end zone for a Miami touchdown. So the Canes answer back, and they get six after Virginia Tech gives them a free one with an offsides penalty on the field goal attempt. Let's go! Absolutely unbelievable situation. I've never seen this with a Virginia Tech coaching staff. They could not get organized. The players did not know what the defense should be. Aditi's out there making one up, and they give up the touchdown. Wow. And Zamponia's extra point is good. The f so Miami gets on the board. It's 17-7. First the penalty. Then a tough time getting lined up, so they play a straight zone defense. you got a DB who's playing what we call a spy. He's a robber in the middle of the field to prevent exactly this kind of thing. He's the best tackler on the team, according to the coaches. And guess what? Kyle Wright gave him a leg and took it away. Well, Wright, in spite of only seven points being on the board here in the first half, he has played a heck of a first half for Miami. And with more, down on the sideline is Quint. Bob, you touched on three offensive coordinators, two head coaches, new systems, new terminology. Coming out of high school, keep in mind, Kyle Wright considered a better player than Reggie Bush, a superior quarterback prospect than Jamarcus Russell and Brady Quinn. But that last play really sums it up. His toughness, and Coach Curry, you mentioned it, just refusing to give up on that, that drive. How many times has he been hit in this game? And he has clearly earned the respect of his teammates on the sideline. This Miami bench is now enthused, and they've got a shot in this ballgame prior to halftime. Well, I think that's, those are all 
wonderful observations. I guarantee you he's got Xavier Adibi's respect now, too, because, I mean, he took him on with the shoulder, and he spun, and the old joke about give him a leg and take it away, he got that in the end zone against the best tackler on Virginia Tech's team. A squib kick will bounce, and it finds its way to Josh Morgan. Morgan with some blockers out in front. Still on his feet. And now pays the price for standing still at the 41-yard line. As he gets a face full of Miami Hurricane with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And I would imagine that this will be the put the ball in the freezer lineup for Virginia Tech with a 10-point lead. What Randy Shannon's got to do when he goes in here at the, at the half with his team is to really make capital of that seven points that was just gutted out by his team. The defense did their job, the offense did their job, the quarterback did a heroic effort to get it in the end zone. He's got to emphasize all those things, and I'm sure he will. But Glennon will put it up with 10 seconds to go before halftime, and it's knocked away. Bruce Johnson leveled Josh Morgan with three seconds to go in the first half. And Virginia Tech is going to call timeout. That's their final timeout here in the first half. So we'll step aside and come back in just a moment. Miami's made it a game again. For over 50 years, the tradition of excellence has continued in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but it's not all about trophies and winning. It's also about sportsmanship, showing respect, rising above it all, and being a leader for both fans and players alike. In the ACC, we're working hard to continue making sportsmanship a tradition. The ACC, a tradition of excellence, then, now, and always. Back here at Virginia Tech, and now Frank Beamer decides to take a knee, and that will do it for the first half. Well, I promise you he had a little flash there when that DB broke on that ball, Wilson broke on that ball. It could have gone the other way. <laughs> so the why. Canes get on the board before halftime at 17-7. We now send it to New York. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. It's the Capital One Halftime Report. All right, guys, thanks. Just about set to start the third quarter here at Lane Stadium. College football presented by Best Buy, and Miami is back in the game. 17-7 as they trail the 10th-ranked Hokies by 10. Bob Schusen here with Coach Bill Curry, and Quick Kesnick will join us in just a moment. It was a first half, really a tale of two quarters. Virginia Tech dominated the first quarter, and they put 17 points on the board. Miami dominated the second quarter. They were only able to manage seven, though. Virginia Tech, 150 yards the first quarter, minus 12 the second. Miami, six yards the first quarter, 138 the second. Miami actually outgained Virginia Tech for the half, and they gutted their way into a score, and they are in this football game. It was really something to see. As we take a look at some of our first half highlights, this sequence at the end of the first half is really what got Miami back in the game. Well, this began, if you'll recall, with Miami being stopped at the one-yard line. The defense did a great job and held them down in there, got the ball in great field position, which is exactly what happens when the defense plays well. Beginning at the 30-yard line, Kyle Wright actually beat Xavier Adibi at the goal line. Gave him a shoulder, twisted, got it in the end zone. It was just a gut check. And you come out admiring Kyle Wright. He's 11 out of 18 for 138 yards. And he's taken a lot of shots, but he's thrown the ball well. Had he not had the drops, this might be a 17-14 game. And keep in mind, Virginia Tech was called for an offsides penalty on a field goal attempt that gave Miami that free first down. Critically important. Got them down to the five-yard line a couple of plays later. Wright goes over, and Quinn Kesnick is down on the sideline. Bob spoke to both coaches as they were coming out of the locker room. We'll start with Randy Shannon. Really happy with the effort he saw from his guys in the second quarter. Remember back early in this game, he focused on the first quarter. He said, I'm just worried about the first 15 minutes. Well, they fall down by 14. He said, once his guys settled in, uh, they started playing with a little confidence and poise. Meanwhile, Frank Beamer echoing what you just said, Bob. The penalty on the made field goal. Wow, he said, we let Miami off the ropes. And he was kind of bemoaning their field position in that second quarter. Didn't get to play much offense. 
Uh, Quint, you're exactly right. Field position in the second quarter might have been the biggest factor, but coach, kudos to the UM defense for making that field position stand up. Absolutely. I mean, the penalty was a, a wonderful thing for Miami, but had they not had the guts to close the deal, look here. That's a live wow. ball that Eddie Royal is forced to retreat and pick up at about the 14-yard line. Damian Berry made the stop on special teams as Royal almost made a mistake. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And the numbers is a tale of two quarters, certainly in that first half. Pacific Life game summary, the numbers that we just mentioned to you, six yards in the first quarter, 150 for Virginia Tech, and then complete reversal of roles almost to the yard in the second quarter. And now the score 17 to 7 for the reasons that we just mentioned. Sean Glennon in at quarterback for Virginia Tech. Drops, sets up the screen to Brandon Orr. Stiff arms a man, but doesn't get much. Steps out at the 12. I think he lost a yard. Colin McCarthy was the first there for the Canes to force him out. Well, that's what you call one of those discretion is the better part of valor decisions. Or on the sideline, stepping out rather than trying to drive. Last three drives, minus four yards. The Miami defense has stiffened and is beginning to play what we said early in the game. Miami's got to play like the U. Well, they're playing like the U beginning in the second quarter and through this point. Second down and 11. A four-man rush. A short pass underneath to Eddie Royal. A gain of three. So it'll be third down and eight. And last week against Florida State, Coach, it seemed as if when this Virginia Tech offense got bogged down, things started to happen when Tyrod Taylor was at quarterback, and you wonder at what point Frank Beamer is going to have his freshman back in there. Uh, in about one play. Uh, <laughs> after this play, <laughs> if they make a first down, he'll be in. If they don't, he'll be in. That's my um, guess. Just a guess. Third and eight. The Canes get the football right back and have great field position once again with a stop here. Over the middle, it's Glennon. Running underneath the first down, Justin Harper stays on his feet. Yards after the catch, out to the 38-yard line. Chevis Grant missed the tackle. Justin Harper having a career here. Justin Harper just doing an incredible job for his quarterback. I'm sorry, he's running the crosser, coming from the other side of the field making one great catch after another last week and again this week. Remember, he's the guy with the one-hander in the back of the end zone, and now the crucial first down. Coach, is it a quarterback? Okay. Tyrod Taylor. He gets popped after a gain of three out to the 41, so a good call. Calais Campbell makes the stop, but Frank Beamer may have heard you. He's got the true freshman back in there. You've got to give Glennon credit. I mean, I don't care how you cut it. You can be as polite as you want to and talk about how you support Tyrod, and he does, and they support each other. But you've got to start looking over your shoulder. You make a couple of poor throws, or you're not making first downs. You start looking to the bench, and sure enough, here he comes. If I know it, you know good and well that Glennon knows it's coming. <laughs> Second down and seven. Play clock down to two. Down to one. They just get it off. Taylor again trying to make it happen with his feet. Boy, he is so cool, calm, and collected. Shirks off the first man, but then Joe Joseph finally finishes him off. He takes a sack, but he never looks panicked. Well, he never is panicked, and that's why we use the words in describing him things like genius and poise and prodigy. This is a true freshman. He doesn't look like a true freshman. Even here, he's under pressure. He's calm. He gets in traffic. He secures the football. He knows he's about to be hit. Joe Joseph takes him down. He's still got the football. So often you see that ball come out in those situations. Although it's Glennon back in now, third down at 13. Lennon flushed out of the pocket. Has a first down. Brandon Orr got loose. He's into Miami territory, tripped up by Daryl Sharpton. That's a gain of 21. When we talk about the natural poise and gifts of the true freshman, how about the senior who knows how to start at the line of scrimmage, draw the linebackers to him, and then hit his quick running back? 
who's found a way to get to an open spot. Great job by Brandon Orr, an even better job by Glennon. So again, Orr the tailback. On first and 10 now in UM territory. Orr right up the middle, right into Daryl Sharpton. And moves him to the 42 for a gain of a couple. Quickly, the quarterback switch is made again. As you can see, Brandon Orr averaging close to six yards per carry to go along with a touchdown. A couple of receptions as well, and Tyrod Taylor is back in. I asked Randy Shannon this morning, what is it about your team you want people to know? He said, I want people to understand this is a beat-up team. We just have very few people that are healthy, ready to play. So it's just a valiant effort by the entire Miami squad. Taylor again is flushed. Down the sideline, has a first down and more. Inside the 30 of UM. Vegas Franklin forced him out. And Taylor's shaken up. He picked up 13 yards. And it looks like he's holding his left hip. This could be a hip bruise or a, what's called a hip pointer. Again, when we watch him come out of here, he just reminds me so much of Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State last year. It's hard to see how that could have been. a. It was not a particularly hard shot. It might have hit him just above the hip pad such that there's that, that little area that's very sensitive there. And, and, and it, it's one of those deals, if you get it bruised, it only hurts when you breathe. <laughs> First and 10. Glennon back in at quarterback, this time for the injured Taylor. Threw it behind Andre Smith, the tight end. So it'll be second down at 10. And I thought it was interesting, too, the coaching staff talking about the decision as to whether or not they were going to redshirt Tyrod Taylor. Wouldn't that be, for Frank Beamer, the the tempting thing to do to have him study for a year under a player like Sean Glennon and then get four years with a year of practice behind him? Well, there was a time when that was a very good way to do it, but I don't think they're going to have him four years. I think he's going to be gone after three. I think he's that good. Well, they also said they looked at their opponents, their offensive line was a little banged up, and they said, you know, it might be good to have a quarterback back there that can run around a little bit. Slant over the middle, and Glennon with a little too much mustard on the pass to Josh Morgan. It was a good throw and catchable for Morgan, and if he caught it, he might have taken it the distance. Taylor is still being attended to on the Virginia Tech sideline. It's hard to see where he was hit hard enough to create the kind of pain he seems to be in. That, it's one of those weird things that happens in football. Sometimes just the slightest blow. Yeah, it's right there above his left hip pad. And that's, a, that's really an area that's easily bruised. Third and 10, same pattern and the same result. Crowd was looking for a flag, as was Josh Morgan. And Bruce Johnson was there. And this will be a long field goal attempt for Virginia Tech. Yeah, and it's against the wind. You can't see the wind from up here. In other words, if you look at those trailers right there at the top of the pole, whoops, there goes Tyrod off the field. They're taking him in the locker room. So they want to x-ray or they want to do so. They want to take a look at it without the pads on there. Dunleavy from 44 yards out to try and stretch the lead once again. Looks pretty good. And it is Judd Denlevy, a 44-yard field goal. He's now six for nine this season. Of field goals are 40 or more yards. He's had a magnificent year, and it's a 13-point Hokies lead. I can't believe my parents are being so lame. I'm 13. I'm all like, why can't I get my belly button pierced? Tina's got one, and they're all like, Oh, well, we don't care what everyone else does, ugh. My parents are so incredibly awesome! Rachel, I gotta go. Besides, Tina's a freak. <laughs> this holiday, put together the gifts they'll really love. We can match a digital camera to the perfect case and show you how the new iPod can store all their photos. That's wow guaranteed, only at Best Buy. Hey, what you eating on? See a Chipotle grilled stuffed burrito. Mm. It's got the right amount of kick. Yeah, for a girl. This is the double Hellraiser with cheese. Oh, hey, ho! You're on what? fire, dude. Yep, I know it. Hey, ho! 
How's that Hellraiser treating you? Marinated carne asada steak spiced up with a smoky Southwest Chipotle sauce. It's Taco Bell's Chipotle grilled stuffed burrito. For taste, not fire. Think outside the bun. How did we arrive at a 315 horsepower engine with the best V8 fuel economy of any full-size pickup? 90 years of R&D. Chevy Silverado. This is our truck. The biggest lineup in American Music Awards history. Get up on your feet and sing with me, y'all. And it's all live. The American Music Awards, tomorrow, 8, 7 central on ABC. Start here. DLP HD TV is an official sponsor of ESPN College Football on ABC HD. College football presented by Best Buy. And it's a 13-point lead for the Hokies. Let's take a look now at some of these upcoming rivalry games presented by Sonic. Clemson and South Carolina coming up as well. Georgia and Georgia Tech. And right at the top of your screen, a divisional championship on the line. Virginia Tech and Virginia next week. And a special guest will be joining us in just a moment about that very topic. As Jenkins gets free and gets all the way out near midfield, for Miami, but the head coach of the Cavaliers at Virginia is Al Groh, and he's kind enough to spend a couple of moments with us. Coach, it's Bob Shusen and Bill Curry. Thank you very much for the time, and congratulations on what has been a magnificent season for you. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me on, and, and I really, uh, you know, I'm not the voice of the Cavaliers. I just speak for all of our Cavaliers. Al, this is Bill. Um, did you know that this might be a special team going in? Let's, let's watch this play, and then I'll let you answer that. First and 10 for the Canes, just shy of midfield. Right to the outside. Short completion of Sam Shields. Yeah, Al, the, 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 did you, in training camp, did you get the feeling that this bunch just might be gritty and together? Uh, very much so. That was in development throughout the winter and the summer, but... This team, as you mentioned, Bill, has a special mental toughness about it. Who, who are your bell cows? Who are the guys that really lead the team? Again, we'll watch this play, and then you can answer. Second down and four. Right comes underneath. Javaris James, a first down. Go ahead, Coach. Well, not only is... Uh, Chris Long been a spectacular player for us, but he's just a marvelous team guy and a marvelous leader. And he's really set the tone for the overall team. And, uh, you know, anytime your team shows real resiliency, it, it depends a large degree on your quarterback. And Jameel Sewell has uh, really provided that smart spark for our offense. And, hey Coach, if you were to look forward to a game with Virginia Tech, what would you tell us about next week? Well, uh, watching the game here today, they're everything that I thought they would be. And, I think they'll be one of the best teams to come into Scott Stadium in recent years. Well, it should be a great atmosphere. A handoff to James, caught at the line by that relentless Virginia Tech defense. Coach Algro, thank you very much for the time, and we'll all be watching next week. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. That's the head coach of the Virginia Cavaliers, Algro. And he's done one of the great coaching jobs of college football this year. Well, he has to because he's being observed by... Kristen Hunter, our daughter, and Billy Curry, our son, ah. both of whom are Virginia alums. <laughs> our son was a letterman there and played for George Welch, and they watched that program carefully and pull hard for their alma mater. Second down and 10 for the Canes, a four-man rush, right flushed. It'll be third down and 10. Oh, I know your family, they never disagree with a coaching decision. Oh, Ever. no, 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 they wouldn't, wouldn't think of it. No. My son thinks he uh, understands football extremely well. And actually, actually, I have to confess he does. He also knows that it's a little easier from the couch to make those calls than it is from the sideline. <laughs> Needless to say, this is a very important play. Very, very important for the Miami Hurricanes. The Canes are four for 10 on third down, trying to keep this drive alive. Steps up. Again underneath. It's James. Can he get to the sticks? Hammer.
covered at the 27-yard line, and that is right about where he needed to get. This is what we've been talking about, Kyle Wright. Yes, he's a gifted athlete. Yes, he's been through a hard time, but he is tough. This is a gutty thing to do. You know you're going to get drilled in the sternum, and you get the ball to your running back and give yourself a chance to make the first down. Now we're going to have the measurement. It looks like it's just a little bit short, and, of course, Miami will need to go. If the Canes are short, and they may be, it's by less than a yard, certainly. Maybe by about a foot and a half. How about a foot? Vince Hall and Cam Martin came up on that last play to stop Travaris James about 18 inches away from the first down. Here's a look at that last hit. His head is on the line, but the football's a yard shy, or about a half yard shy, I should say. It's amazing how often these officials are correct. When you think you see something and they didn't see it, they're well trained and they normally get it right. Biggest play of the game at this point, another obvious, another obvious point. The Hurricanes trail by a couple of touchdowns, three tight ends. Javaris James, the lone setback on fourth down and a foot. The quarterback sneak, and now it depends on the spot. This is one of the toughest things that the officials have to do. I did not see a great surge from the Miami offensive line. It looked to me like the defensive line actually moved. When you get in a goal line drill in practice, you teach your defensive line and your offensive line, get underneath the pads and knock the other group back, reestablish the line of scrimmage. It did not look to me that the offensive line got that kind of movement. Well, look, I, but I think, I think Wright got the first down. Yeah, if our first down line, that yellow line we run across the field, of course, is correct, the football was beyond that line. Well, even looking at the hash, look at, look at the way the markings are on the sideline, you can see that he made it. But he did it with that excellent technique that I talked about earlier with Glennon running a first down. He did it by getting his pads down and driving his legs, getting in behind his linemen, even though they didn't do the greatest job in the world. See, you see the white shirts are knocked back here. Barry Booker's in the backfield. But that's not where Kyle Wright was. He slipped off to the left and very quickly made the first down. So perhaps with a bit of a generous spot, Kyle Wright has a first down. Wright wants it all. It's a jump ball at the goal line into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Sam Shields. Excellent coverage, though. Brandon Flowers, step for step. We saw Sam Shields beat Brandon Flowers earlier because he got even with him. He froze him with a move. Well, when he made the move there, Flowers didn't bite, and it is Flowers in position to make the catch here. That's great defensive work. And Coach Bud Foster told us that all of the defensive backs they've had at Virginia Tech, he thinks this guy's the best. Yeah, and you know who we're talking about? We're talking about a whole bunch of starting NFL corners. Second down and 10. Here comes the blitz. Right, might tuck it under. And does, dives down to about the 21-yard line. Well, if you want to talk about high praise of a cornerback, it is high praise when you say Brandon Flowers is the best we've had at Virginia Tech if you're Bud Foster. Look at some of the guys he's had. D'Angelo Hall, Ike Charlton, Jimmy Williams, Corey Bird, all first through third round draft choices, and you go right on down the list. There's not a guy there that's not an outstanding player. Brandon Flowers singled out as the best. So he was not going to get beat twice on the same route tonight. Another big third down conversion opportunity for Miami. Third and four at the 21. Right, again underneath. Javaris James has the first down. A flag comes in late as well. A flag down as Javaris James gets to the 14-yard line. Roughing the passer is called against Virginia Tech. Well, this will put UM inside the 10, probably at about the 7. We got it for you. 
Look, oh, goodness, yes. I mean, what a thing to do. Now, Barry Booker's had an outstanding game. Also on the play, we have a personal foul. Illegal block to the head, number 59. Defense, roughing the pass and to the end of the run. Half a distance, first down. It's a good call. Defensive linemen are rough guys. Barry Booker's a rough guy. So he's fighting to get to the quarterback. When you get there, Barry, you can't hop up in the air and pop him upside the head. They will not let you do that anymore. Now, they used to do that with impunity in the NFL. You can't do it anywhere anymore. That's a personal foul. So here are the Canes clawing their way back to the seven-yard line, first and goal, trailing by 13. A pitch out. James tries to turn the corner. A flag comes in late as Macho Harris came up and dropped James after maybe a half-yard gain. James had a notion to cut it up inside. He saw an opening. And now holding against Virginia Tech. Let's go back to Matt Weiner in the studio. All right, Bob, our nominee for the Pontiac game-changing performance comes from Georgia, where Kentucky led 10-7. When Keelan Johnson blocked the punt six plays later, the Bulldogs cashed in on this Thomas Brown touchdown run to take the lead for good. Check out the season's best Pontiac game-changing performances at ESPN.com. Search Pontiac. All right, Matt, thanks very much. So Georgia in control against Kentucky. They actually won that game, and that last penalty called against Miami. So now it's first and goal at about the 17-yard line. Swapping penalties. That was a big one by Derek Morris, the right guard, number 71. Right outside the intended receiver, Darnell Jenkins, who was trying to run an inside wide receiver screen. And rather than lead him, Kyle Wright almost made Jenkins freeze in his tracks to go after the ball that was thrown behind him. Well, Kyle Wright, in this case, saw a flash of that purple jersey coming inside out. And I think it spooked him a little bit. And he threw the ball. He did not throw the ball in a backward pass manner. I don't know why the players were diving on it. They treated it as if they were afraid it was a backward pass. Nice job of flashing on defense, meaning showing up in the vision of the quarterback and causing the bad throw. The ball out near the 17-yard line. It is second down and goal. And right up the middle to the 10. He's at the 5 and down inside the 2. Macho Harris saved a touchdown. Yeah, Wright's enjoying this. He hops up and pats Macho on the back of the head. Nice play, little fella. The big guy is having the time of his life. He's actually getting a chance to compete in the toughest arena in the country, arguably, after a disaster a week ago, and he's about to bring his team right back into this football game, taking the team on his shoulders personally. Third down and goal at the one. Hand off to the fullback with flags down. Jarrell Mabry may have gotten stopped a half yard shy nonetheless. That kind of flag usually means the defense lines up offsides. We'll see. Nikos Brown, number 47. Sure enough, just trying to get an edge. Offside. Defense, number 47, half the distance to the goal, still third down. Now you do a great job. You're inside the one. You stuff a big old tough fullback. You knock the offensive line back. And because 47 can't see the football, come on, take a look, Nikos. <laughs> Good gracious, they're not going to let you do that. So half the distance puts the ball inside the one. Again, it's still third down, third and goal. Mabry and James are behind right. They'll lob it instead. A jump ball into the end zone. Caught a touchdown. Leonard Hankerson working on Macho Harris. And the Canes are back within a score. And Macho is livid. I want to see that again because that was a push off. Macho's correct. Leonard Hankerson just gave him a little shove, jumped up, and caught the ball. Macho's not a happy camper. I do not blame him. Leonard got away with one here. Watch that. You see that left arm go out? That's against the rules. That's offensive interference. And That's a penalty flag off. is thrown as the Canes line up to attempt the extra point. So this penalty flag is about 30 seconds late, according to everyone here at Lane Stadium. 
With the trouble, though, that Miami has had putting the ball in the end zone this season, I don't think there's one, one fan at South Florida watching right now that cares that they missed the push-off. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 11. Xavier Adibi expressed himself, I'm sure, being the team leader. And I guess he didn't say, come on, guys. I think that was pushing off. Probably said something a little stronger. 20 to 13. Make it 20 to 14 with 5.41 to go in the third quarter. Miami with a 12-play, 53-yard touchdown drive. And Randy Shannon, who is trying to get as much out of this Canes team as he possibly can down the stretch. Happy his team's back in it here in Blacksburg. College football brought to you by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. DLP HD TV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. And Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? Well, there's a look at the touchdown maker, Leonard Hankerson. Hankerson came into today, this season, with three catches, coach, for 25 yards. Today, he's got two catches for 25 yards and his first touchdown. I, he's probably the last guy that Virginia Tech thought that pass was going to go to. Josh Morgan, pretty good field position out to the 32-yard line. And here's another look at the touchdown or penalty. Well, every now and then you got to get a break in the sport of football. Here's Hankerson. He's going to be going against Macho Harris right there. He's going to get in the end zone, get his body turned, give a little shove with the left arm, which is against the rules, go up and catch the ball. Macho flips out. There is Coach Frank Beamer talking to Ron Cherry, who is the head official, the referee, all to no avail. There's a DB who had some words for the officials. Frank is just beside himself because that was a clear miss by the officials. Sean Glennon wide open. Andre Smith, the tight end. A blown coverage by Miami. All the flow came to the near side. Smith floated out to the far side, and no one from the Canes accounted for him, and he picked up 20 yards. Well, the, the biggest surprise is that it's taken this long to, to throw what's called the wide delay. A little shot there. Well, that should have been an extra Glennon. 15 yards. Probably should have been another 15 yards. But that was a play that just killed the Hurricanes a week ago. The University of Virginia threw the ball repeatedly to their tight ends. Well, Eric Monker got away with one. And I'm not sure how the officials missed Glennon. Getting hit violently in the head. On first down, Glennon slants one underneath. Winning the battle for the football, Justin Harper. He was guarded by Bruce Johnson, but that looks to be good for another Virginia Tech first down. You think back, just a couple of series ago, Glennon's trying to throw those slants. He's throwing one too long. He's throwing another one just behind. That one threaded the needle literally beautifully. And if he throws those slants like that, we're going to see a lot of them, and they're going to force Miami into man coverage, and then we're going to see the deep ball again. That's the thinking, I can tell you right now. When they get in that man coverage inside out, then we'll see the deep balls again. Glennon may not have had a perfect day, but when he does throw it accurately, they sure made it count. Now Tyrod Taylor is back on the Virginia Tech sideline. Remember he had a, what looked to be some type of a hip injury and went to the Virginia Tech locker room. But he has made his way back to the sideline, although right now it's the Sean Glennon show. And now it's the Brandon Orr show for the Hokies. Down to the 21-yard line goes Orr. Great job up front. Andre Smith, Ed Wang, the big right tackle, the guy that came back off the injury, sealing the inside and then a slip. Kenny Phillips is having trouble with his footing tonight. He slipped and wasn't able to come up and deliver the blow that he normally does from his strong safety position. Brandon Orr having the best night of the year. Orr down to the 15-yard line. A gain of six more yards. Willie Cooper on the stop. Great football atmosphere here in Blacksburg. Lane Stadium is the spot. An ACC matchup between UM and Virginia Tech. Bob Oshusen here with Bill Curry and Quint Kesnick. 
And it has been a first quarter dominated by Virginia Tech when they went up 17-0. Miami comes all the way back to cut the lead to 20-14, getting right back in it. But this drive by Sean Glennon has the Hokies back inside the red zone. And it's back to the ground and Brandon Oren, another first down inside the 10 down to the seven yard line as he escaped the tackle of Joe Joseph. Big Nick Marchman, the best squat guy on the entire football team, number 67, is going to pull and lead up inside. Watch those powerful legs as he clears the hole. Just a sort of a brush block on the trap. Brandon Orr running with the kind of abandon that he displayed in the 06 season. Play clock down to one, and Brandon Orr calls timeout. That's a smart play by the junior tailback. He saw that the flag was about to be thrown for delay of game, and now a flag has been thrown on the far side. Timeout in the field was called prior to the flag being thrown for delay. Timeout. So they pick up the flag, and you can see Frank Beamer giving a pump of the fist to Brandon Orr. A nice job by the junior tailback to avoid the five-yard penalty. ESPN on ABC. Any luck? Some. It'll be prettier, bigger. Want to see? Sure. The mirrors make bigger, better. Oh, what? <laughs> Dude, it's amazing. It's the mirrors. DLP HD TV. Millions of tiny mirrors make the biggest pictures better. Head to Best Buy today and check out the latest DLP HD TVs. Oh, game day. Yeah, lucky breakfast. <laughs> Birdwood, your new car is rolling. It's not stolen, I just bought it. It's going to hit that truck. Please no need to swear. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hot car, huh? on fire. Do you have new car replacement? Hmm? Call Allstate to sign up today. Are you in good hands? They pick up touchdowns, pick up the bucks, and pick up their teams. Enterprise salutes NCAA student-athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Rescue Dawn is relentlessly exciting. Christian Bale gives the performance of his life. Inspired by the true story. Rescue Dawn on DVD Tuesday. At Michelin, our tires are rigorously tested. They're laser checked, x-rayed for structural integrity. And finally, no tire leaves the factory without a thorough hand inspection. LG Skins Game, Thanksgiving weekend on ABC. 3.08 to go in the third quarter back here at Lane Stadium. First and goal, Virginia Tech. They have a one score lead, and now the officials blow the play dead at the line before we can get underway. As Glennon had his team ready, and they have to reset the play clock. It was begun just a hair too early. Never a good sign from the officials but looking over at Frank Beamer with arms outstretched going, well, I don't know. Did you ever get that? What was your response? You got the outstretched arms from the officials. Oh, uh, they wouldn't look at me. <laughs> look at me. Look at me. <laughs> no. Right. Anywhere but you. They look at Frank Beamer. Now is set first and goal. At the seven. Or to the five. In. Touchdown. The second touchdown run of the day for Brandon Orr. And Virginia Tech answers the Kane score.
right back to two touchdowns for the Hokies. A six play, 68 yard drive by Virginia Tech. And Brandon Orr has a two touchdown day. Dedication, hard work, while always looking to the future. That's what makes ACC student athlete. Me, taking the best parts of myself to become a better person. Making the pieces fit, achieving, preparing for tomorrow. Then it hit me, I'm also preparing for the rest of my life. The Atlantic Coast Conference, striving for tomorrow, today. Sports Center Minute powered by Vizio. Beaten knee well. 62 yards on this touchdown run as Ohio State cements the birth in the Rose Bowl. Michigan with the loss also has a 10 a.m. news conference on Monday expected to announce Lloyd Carr's retirement. Vanderbilt's kicker Brian Hunfeld had a chance here to win the game, but it just doinks off the upright. And Tennessee survives, so Tennessee still with a shot to go to the SEC championship game if they win next week. Back to you. The kickoff comes down to Darnell Jenkins. Jenkins gets a lane. All the way out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. So great field position for the Canes, but Bill Curry, they're down by two touchdowns again. Good football teams answer. Great football teams answer definitively. You'll see Ed Wang followed by Brandon Orr, two of the players injured. Wang, the big man around the corner, sealing the inside, sealing off the entire inside of the Miami defense with his block. The unbalanced formation could be given credit to Brian Springstein, the fine offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. The blocking by Wang, the running by Orr. Two players who had been injured earlier. Here comes the blitz, and Miami basically runs right into it. Cam Martin came on a blitz from the near side, and it looked like that's where Javaris James initially wanted to run to. He looked up and saw Cam Martin, but whoa, I better cut back to the left, and he picked up a yard. Well, a good offense has got to be like a good religion. You've got to have an answer for everything. They have not had an answer for that Cam Martin blitzing off the edge today. The quarterback has to see that and get a blocker on him. That's his responsibility. Second down and nine. Here comes the blitz again. Right, hit as he throws. Intercepted, Macho Harris. Down the sideline. Harris inside the 20. This time it's the other Cam, number 17, Cam Chancellor. We showed you earlier how Miami had accounted for him, had picked him up, but this time he's clean right up the pipe. He's gonna come from deep here. He'll be clean and be right in Kyle Wright's face. Forced deep throw, picked off by Macho Harris, and how many times have you seen this with Virginia Tech defense? The great pressure, the great presence, good football teams answer, great football teams put you away. Or is shut down at the line, but it is always the defense and special teams that makes the plays for Virginia Tech. Since 2000, no team in college football has more interceptions than Virginia Tech. 154, 13 better than Oklahoma. That is a lot of balls to catch with the other quarterback throwing it. Yeah, that's just a remarkable statistic, and Frank Beamer has emphasized, and not only has he emphasized, but he has gotten this from his teams since he began to succeed here. Second and 13. Glennon on a keeper. Hit hard by Darrell Sharpton inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line, and time permitting, we invite you to stay tuned for the Dell postgame report with John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie from our New York studios. Again, that's coming up right after the game if there's time with one minute to go in the third quarter. Right now, Miami in danger of falling behind by three scores. Yeah, I've sort of stuttered around and tried to say it a couple of times. Good teams answer when you score on them. Great teams answer and then put you away. And that's what Virginia Tech 
is trying to do right now. Third down and nine. Here comes the blitz. Glennon lobs one towards the end zone. Jump ball and incomplete. That was good coverage by Bruce Johnson. Inside of Josh Morgan, no flag came out, nor should one have fallen. Randy Shannon is all in his defense's face over on the sideline prior to the last score. And he comes with the pressure now. You get close, you get within field goal range against good defenses, and they're going to come after you, and they're going to expect their corners to do what Wilson did right there and be in position yourself to make the catch. And Levy already two for two today, both uh, 40 yards or better. This one comes from 37 yards out. Tough angle for a right-footed kicker. He handles it, though, right down the middle. Now keep in mind, Miami's defense... This might be a bit of a Hail Mary for the Canes coach, but they did a pretty good job right there, holding Virginia Tech to only a field goal, and mathematically, it's still a two-possession game. They did a very good job, and they kept themselves with a chance. Yes, technically a two-possession game, assuming you can go for two and make it both times, and that's problematic as well. But Miami has shown a lot of fight, a lot of grit, and Randy Shannon has them in the huddle over there. He's coaching them as this game progresses. It is his personality that has distinguished their defense through the last decade. And he intends to impose it on them here and have them finish this thing fighting every step of the way. Here he is with his linebackers. He's not panicky. He's not spitting and spewing and cussing, but he's exasperated. He doesn't want Brandon Orr running up and down the field. Orr had four carries for 38 yards on the touchdown drive. He wants that stopped. Well, Randy Shannon's resume, three national championships as a player and coach, and it's always been defense under Randy Shannon. A national, Canes, excuse me, national coach of the year, assistant coach of the year in 2001. Well, in the six years that he was the defensive coordinator, five of those six years, UM was in the top 10 in the nation in total defense and the top 13 in the nation in scoring defense, including in the top four in scoring defense three times. Well, this time, the kickoff is pounded deep by Dunleavy, and it will go as a touchback. 30 to 14, Virginia Tech on top. Great atmosphere here at Lane Stadium. With more, here's Quinn. Bob, what a difference five minutes makes in this ball game. At a time where Miami, when Hankerson scored that touchdown, you could get a sense on this Virginia Tech sideline that they were starting to become unraveled, uh, just uneasiness. Next thing you know, they answer with the Brandon Orr touchdown, and now all the momentum has shifted. Just an amazing turnaround. Miami's sideline is now down and flat. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech, they've got to hop in their step. Well, trying to get a hop back into Miami's step. To the outside, it's Darnell Jenkins from Kyle Wright. Brandon Flowers came up and made the stop. That should take us to the end of the third quarter. Miami, if they hurry, could potentially get one more playoff, but Wright realizing why rush, and he heads to the sideline. It's still a two-possession game, but it's a 16-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter for Virginia Tech here at Lane Stadium. College football presented by Best Buy will return after these messages. Retirement isn't just about spending endless hours enjoying warm tropical waters. It's not even just about leaping and jumping for joy because you plan to head smartly. And it's not even about sharing time with family and friends over a great meal whenever you want. Or is it? It's time to start thinking about tomorrow. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. It's the season to shop, and the red tags are coming back for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag event. And right now, they're bringing the best values of the season. Look for the red tag and get 0% financing for 60 months on remaining 2007 Pontiac, Buick, and GMC models. That's 0% financing for five full years on all 2007 cars, light-duty trucks, and SUVs while supplies last. The Red Tag Event. See some red, save some green. Thanksgiving Thursday. We got two ambulances one minute apart. The beginning of an all-new Grey's Anatomy event. The doctors of Seattle Grace have survived countless emergencies. 
Come, we need somebody here now. No! But nothing hey, you guys? has ever hit you guys? this close to home. Oh! An all-new Grey's Anatomy event, Thanksgiving Thursday at 9, 8 central, followed by a special preview of October Road on ABC. Finally, a shopping experience you will love. The Nissan year-end sales event. The perfect time to shop for a more versatile bed, for 317 horsepower, and the longest bed available on a crew cab. The savings are truly special, like 5,000 total cash back on Titan Crew Cab or Titan King Cab. Now is the time to shop for your new Nissan. And now through December 3rd, get $500 holiday bonus cash on most Nissans. See your Nissan dealer now. Want more, Jim? Watch him weeknights at 7 on Central Florida's TV 27. You're watching ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Remington. Virginia Tech is 7-1 and one when leading after three quarters, and there is their hallmark, the lunch pail. That's the biggest lunch pail you've ever seen. That one's about 10 feet wide, 6 feet high. That hangs in their Hall of Honor and their football complex, but Xavier Adibi anchors a defense that plays a lunch pail style. And now they've got a two-score lead as we head to the fourth quarter. A keeper by Kyle Wright shut down and with more downstairs. Here's Quint. Bob, that lunch pail symbolizes hard work, commitment, loyalty, and trust. And the, the phenomenon is, is just out of control here at Virginia Tech. Bud Foster, he gets lunch pails mailed to him from fans from around the country. He's got so many of them. You see a bunch in his office. The extras he takes home, gives to his wife. She plants plants in there. That's a mobile lunch pail. Yeah, it's a VW <laughs> bus. Are you kidding me? There's Bud. He's actually got a tattoo of the lunch pail on his shoulder. Did not show us, but he says when he got the tattoo, too. It felt like someone was taking glass shards to his shoulder. Third and ten and right under duress. Somehow makes a completion. And the officials say on the far side, Darnell Jenkins stepped out of bounds. How did Wright even get the ball to him with Cam Chancellor coming on the blitz? Well, Cam Chancellor has just been coming like a rocket all night long. This has been a big, big part of Bud Foster, the Foster thinking. The DB Three absorbing nine. the back block right there. Here comes Chancellor, full speed, and Wright's pretty quick, but he's not quicker than the fleet Chancellor. So now Matt Bosher has to come on and kick it away, and whistles blow the punt dead as Bosher gets it away. Timeout on the field. Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech calls timeout just before the punt. The 30 second timeout. So that's a curious thing. I'm, I'm trying to look at Coach Beamer's face and figure out who called the timeout and what the thinking was. Well, while we have a moment, let's take a look at our ESPNU All-State BCS standings review. And constantly, this top ten all season long has been shaken up. And the latest shakeup, Oregon loses at Arizona in the Thursday night game. And some key night games still to come. Oklahoma tonight down at Lubbock and West Virginia taking on number 22 Cincinnati. As those two teams are holding on to very serious BCS championship game hopes. Well, this has been the most interesting year. And people who talk to me about we need a playoff system, we got a playoff system. It starts the last weekend in August and it goes through the first weekend of December. And then we divvy it up and put them in the bowls. This is a fascinating year. It's just great fun. Well, what could be more fun than the Big 12 down the stretch? Well, that guy's hosting the tailgate. I want to visit after the game's over. So now the punt's on fourth and five. And Royal will call for a fair catch. And field at his own 34-yard line. And a reminder, the race for the chase continues. On Sunday afternoon, it will conclude with the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series Ford 400 at the Homestead Speedway in Miami on ABC, Sunday at 3 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And as we take a look at the standings, a heavy, heavy favorite going into this weekend, Jimmy Johnson, the leader by 86 points over Jeff Gordon. Again, Sunday at 3 Eastern, the NASCAR Nextel Cup. We'll wrap that. On first 
first down and end around to Royal. Gets to the sideline. Out of bounds inside the 45 at the Miami 40 yard line. Levon Ponder saved a touchdown or Royal was gone. Carlton Weatherford, number 39, the fullback doesn't get mentioned very often. Nice job, here he comes. He starts one way and then comes back the other, freezes the linebackers. Great block, a nice cut block in the open field on Kenny Phillips, and Kenny Phillips who is a great player. He's not having his favorite night tonight, I can assure you. Well, now the UM defense desperately needs a stop. And they might get it. Kenny Lewis shut down behind the line by Colin McCarthy. Well, we told you that the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series wraps up this weekend, and I guarantee you that young man will be watching. Nick Marshman, the left guard for Virginia Tech. He only might squats. Might be literally and figuratively the biggest NASCAR fan in the country. And he only squats 7'10". <laughs> Yeah, I'm not as nearly as impressed with his NASCAR deal as with the 710 squad. Second down at 14. Lennon sets up the screen to Brandon Orr. Orr dodging tacklers, only picks up a couple of yards, but Nick Marshman told us his top three reasons that he spends his weekends watching NASCAR. <laughs> My top three reasons for watching NASCAR on a Sunday afternoon are number three, I get to lay around with my roommates all afternoon, uh, watch the race. Number two, it's more exciting than baseball. Uh, there's crashes, there's guys getting frustrated, there's tires burning, and number one reason, I get to watch my favorite driver in the 01 U.S. Army car, Mark Martin, and I'll be tuned in on Sunday to ABC to watch the race. I'm just glad he admitted that they watch for the crashes. Third down Most of them do that. Lennon, first down and then some. Getting loose is Josh Hyman. Out of bounds at the one yard line. He tried to sneak the ball inside the pylon, and I think Josh Hyman believes he scored. And he's going over to plead his case. Well, Glennon made a nice throw because he led his receiver away from the defender. Actually ended up throwing it behind Hyman. Hyman came back and made a wonderful catch. And if there's anything that distinguishes the offense of Virginia Tech in the last two weeks, it is that kind of incredible concentration. That was a tough catch. Coming back, that's a touchdown. Folks, that's a touchdown. When that ball breaks the plane, watch this. Let me show you again. They're going to review it. With that is so hard to do, running one way, turning your body, getting back and catching the ball. He's going to put this in the end zone, and it's going to be a touchdown. That angle was a little bit harder to see. Watch his foot hit the sideline. Whoa, Has the ball whoa. broken the plane yet? Now we got to decide whether the foot hit the ground before the ball broke the plane. I think it was simultaneous. The officials will have to see, and they'll have the same angles we do. They can look at all of them. They are reviewing as we touchdown. speak. Well, here's a question for you, Coach. If this is not a touchdown, how is the ball marked all the way back at the one-yard line? Well, I mean, the, at the very least, the ball should be about an inch away from the goal line, not certainly a full yard away. The official would, would argue that the foot touched when the ball was in that spot. The rule says wherever the ball is, when the foot touches out of, out of bounds or when the knee touches the ground, that's where the ball is placed. That's how it's spotted. And of course, it's, a, it's an art, not a science. The official's right. running full speed. He has to be in position. They're usually right on these things, but it's good that we've got a way to judge it. Well, if we're that concerned as to whether or not it was a touchdown, the ball sure as heck wasn't at the one when his foot here. stepped out. The play stands is called on the field. The run is out at the one yard line. Well, we'll take one more look. He does step out of bounds, but is the ball all the way back at the one-yard line with his footsteps out there? That I, ball is... I think the official would argue, yes, that, that it was. I think that would be their argument, and, and I think there's some merit to that. It just it seemed so obviously across the, the plane to me. So it's first and goal at the one. Brandon Orr, the tailback, already has a two-touchdown game. Instead, it's the fullback, Carlton Weatherford. Is he in? No signal yet. Yes, he's in. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. 
Good teams answer scores, great teams answer, and then they put you away. That's exactly this Virginia Tech team trying to earn the right to call itself a great team. Weatherford, who did a nice job of blocking to get this, this deal going with the reverse to Royal, now gets a chance to score a touchdown, one of his three or four carries on the season. The first career touchdown for Carlton Weatherford. He's a walk-on. He actually blew out his knee three years ago and took a long time to fight his way back into playing shape. So a moment ago, it looked as if Josh Hyman may have gotten in. Instead, it's the fullback Carlton Weatherford that puts the exclamation point on the drive and maybe the game for Virginia Tech. You're watching ESPN on ABC. The Ford F-150 has massive lower front control arms and rear shock absorbers mounted outside the frame rails, giving it the highest available payload in its class. giving you unbelievable handling and control. Now that's forward thinking. You want to know what kind of shirt I'm wearing? I'll tell you. You want to know what kind of gloves I wear? I'll tell you. But if you want to know what kind of cleats I'm wearing... <laughs> You tell me. Sports Authority, dedicated to the dedicated. Hi guys, what's going on? Buzzword bingo. Buzzword bingo? These innovation meetings are killing us. The hype, the jargon. The buzzwords. Every time you hear one, you mark your card. In short, we are 100% committed to facilitating a culture of out of the box, goal-oriented, value-added, disruptive, Web 3.0. Bingo. When you're this rich, arrange a sit down. Nothing's fair in love. You kissed my husband and told him that you loved him. And war. You're not planning on shooting, were you? An all new dirty, sexy money. Wednesday at 10 9 Central after an all new private practice on ABC. It's quiet right now on the streets just outside of Virginia Tech, but they'll be partying a short time from now, assuming the Hokies can hold on. As they have now firmly taken control, 37-14 over Miami. So the Canes about to get the football back. This will be Jenkins from the four. Nowhere to go. But coach, amazingly enough, should Virginia Tech hold on and win this game? It would be the first time in four years that the home team has won when these two teams have gotten That's together. That's right. Four out of the past six years, the visiting team has won. Three in a row. But it looks like Virginia Tech is in control of this game. Miami will have to do something different than they've done this entire season to get back in this one. Yeah, Miami has not put many points on the board this year, and now they find themselves trailing by 23 with 11 and a half minutes remaining. Been a solid afternoon, though, for Kyle Wright. He has not gotten a ton of help from his receivers, nor has he gotten a ton of help in the second half of the offensive line, but a flag comes out. Cam Martin drove right to the ground, and this might be a personal foul. Kyle Wright, Astros incomplete. Just for grounding, seven, walks it down, third down. Wow, so instead the penalty is against Kyle Wright for grounding. Cam Martin thought they were going to call it on him for roughing the quarterback. But if you get outside the tight end here, the rule says if we can stop it right here, the rule says when you throw this ball, it's got to land beyond the line of scrimmage. Wright just didn't get enough on it. He's got to get that ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, wow, well, I can see why Martin thought he might get called he probably should these officials are these officials are letting 
them play out there. And we'll put it that way. Oh, what a huge penalty from the end zone, right over the middle. Diedrich Epps for a few yards out close to the 10 yard line. Vince Hall made the stop. And Vince Hall, who had been out for the past few games, he broke his wrist against Clemson five games ago. But a chance to come back and play on senior day, the last game that he would have a chance to play here at Lane Stadium. He has a brace on that wrist, but he has been in there for most every snap this afternoon for that Virginia Tech defense. Buck Foster has a tattoo on his shoulder, but the tattoos that his defense is putting on people are a lot more important to him right now. Right from the end zone, down the sideline, throws it away. Corey Robertson was pressuring Kyle Wright. And now it is fourth down. And the Canes need to get from Blacksburg to Dade County to pick up a first down. And so now they're going to send that punting unit out from the end zone with 10 and a half minutes to go. This happens so many times when you watch Virginia Tech play. They start out, and maybe they're dominating, and maybe the other team comes back at them. But they will absolutely take the life out of you in the fourth quarter. A nice punt, though, by Bosher. Royal from his own 37. Eddie Royal picks up a couple of blocks and makes a couple of moves on his own. And the all-time best punt return man in ACC history gets out to the 44-yard line. So Virginia Tech has it, and they are in command here in the fourth quarter. Hello, I'm a Mac. And he's a PC, the best-selling computer platform in the industry. Uh, what, what is this PC? Oh, I hired a PR person, you know, to smooth things over after that whole Vista problem. Uh, by problem, he means a few early adopters have faced some minor challenges. Yeah, some people even started downgrading back to XP. Oh, that's too bad. And by downgrading, he means they're upgrading to an older, more familiar experience. And with your new operating system, Leopard, and its cool features, some people might even switch to you, so... No comment. Why you only get the first? Because I have the higher hey, point. Hey, hey, hey. It's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Part of Allstate, your choice auto insurance. Are you in good hands? Let me upgrade you. And let me upgrade you to the best channels in HD. Only on DirecTV. Let me, let me, let me upgrade. upgrade to 85 of the best channels in HD now, only on DirecTV. The Ford F-150 has massive lower front control arms and rear shock absorbers mounted outside the frame rails, giving it the highest available payload in its class. And giving you unbelievable handling and control. Now that's forward thinking. This presentation of college football brought to you by Best Buy. This holiday will help you put together perfect gifts. The Ford F-150, built Ford tough. And Clean Exchange, a disposable head electric shaver, new from Remington. Back here at Virginia Tech. What is that place? Oh, it's the library. Oh, see, I don't recognize. From my years of college, I have no idea what the inside of the library you know, I got a buddy that like. plumped out and came back, and the dean said in his fourth year, you need to go to the library. So I'd love to. Where is that thing? <laughs> I, think, I think that was the same answer I gave. On first down, Sean Glennon under pressure. Needs to hold on to the football to avoid disaster. Vegas Franklin with the sack for Miami. Helped out by Joe Joseph. Now, you would never think of that as a good play, but that was a marvelous play by Sean Glennon. What he did when he was getting drilled, he, he came out with a naked boot. There's no blocker out there. If the end plays it correctly, he's going to get pulled up and drilled. He put the ball away so he didn't give it to the opposition. Loss of 10 on first down, so Glennon with a trap handoff. Kenny Lewis for a couple of yards and with more on Sean Glennon. Here's Quint. Bob, early in the week, Sean Glennon was really a question mark health-wise because against Florida State last week, he got absolutely jacked. A helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact 
that left him in a daze. We asked him, he said, what do you remember? He says, I, I don't remember anything other than what I saw on the film. For 15 minutes, he was blacked out, sleeping the next day, said he was trying to do his uh, homework and got a headache. He said it was the lowest grade concussion. They put him through a bunch of uh, memory and balance tests. They're actually doing a concussion study here uh, at Virginia Tech. He said he felt like a lab rat and a guinea, guinea pig. And <laughs> good news, he's back and he has produced today. He really has. He you just have to be so serious about those head injuries, and he was really spaced out last week and had, you didn't know where he was. Number eight, offense. It's a false start. Five-yard penalty. Our sideline person went up to him and said, are you okay? And he said, no, <laughs> I am not. Well, he was actually joking with us, and, and Quinn Kesnick made, uh, made reference to it that a couple of the guys on the sideline, his concussion, of course, opened the door for Tyrod Taylor to come on, but a couple of the trainers on the sideline who were doing that concussion study, he said, you know, they seemed a little too happy that I had a concussion, because all of a sudden now, as Kenny Lewis gets Lewis gets down the sideline and gets back to where the original line of scrimmage was, says now all of a sudden, as Quinn said, I could become their lab rat, and they took me back to the lab, and they ran about every possible test on me, but I wasn't looking for those guys to have so many smiles on their face when they found out I had a concussion. Yeah, he said, well, I just started thinking, why is everybody so happy that I had a concussion? <laughs> and and, he, and the, sure enough, the doctor said, you know, we hadn't, hadn't had a concussion since early in the year, and we really are studying these things. So he said, I had to take personality tests to see if I had changed since I first took the test early in the summer. But I think that's all great. I think that's really important. College programs doing a job in the serious injury categories. Arnell Jenkins is deep to receive the punt from Brett Bowden. And Bowden gets away a spiral that drives Jenkins back to the eight. A flag down, and Jenkins is down as well at the 11-yard line. Boy, did he take a divot out at about the six-yard line. You're not kidding. That looks like one of my eight irons. <laughs> 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 Did you hit that a little fat? Good gracious. So with seven and a half minutes to go in regulation time, this will be a penalty that will go against Tech. So Frank Beamer's team will get hurt field position wise, but they are not hurting on the scoreboard. Well, that was return, we have a block in the back. 38, the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So we'll step aside midway through the fourth quarter. And here on the campus at Virginia Tech, Lane Stadium is packed, and the Tech Pokies have the lead. Tech, the 10th ranked Hokies in command over Miami. Things aren't that tense. <laughs> all the dental work that mom and dad paid for all those years about to go out the window. From the end zone, Kyle Wright steps up. With a pump fake, tries to tuck it under and lost the football. Xavier Adibi hit him at the seven yard line and the ball came out. Joel Figueroa may have come away with the loose ball and now a couple of players come away with the pile with handfuls of jerseys and face masks. So while a fracas is broke up in the end zone, the ball is awarded to Virginia Tech at the eight yard line. Brandon Flowers on the recovery. A really sad thing happens when a guy like Kyle Wright has played so well all night long, gets the ball knocked out, and if Virginia Tech is able to, able to capitalize here, this is going to look like it was just a plain another blowout football game. That's not what it has been at all, and yet this is what he'll remember. Patrick Nix, his coach, has done a great job of getting him ready to come out here and play a valiant game and a well-prepared game tonight, but what will be remembered is the turnovers, unfortunately. Ryan Martin came up with the loose ball, and Cheeseman, the tailback, fights his way down to about the five-yard line. Let's remember, Bill Curry, there is another big game coming up tonight in the ACC. Boston College and Clemson. Yep. The winner would advance to the ACC title game out of the Atlantic Division. And BC, they've lost their last couple after getting up to the number two spot in the BCS stand. Well, everybody that got to number two has been beaten. Everybody. Yeah, two's been a bad number this yeah. year, hasn't it? 
Second down and goal at the five. Eastman up the middle. Hurt is the pile and gets down to about the one. And there are some other games tonight as well. ESPN and ABC team up to bring you two more great college football games. First, at 745, Big East is the place for West Virginia and Cincinnati in a matchup that both teams need to win to keep their conference title hopes alive. And then at 8 Eastern, Sam Bradford and Oklahoma trying to clinch the Big 12 South when they take on Texas Tech. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels and Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, part of Rivalry Week presented by Remington. Cheeseman moves the pile into the end zone. Yes, another touchdown on the ground for the Hokies, and they have blown this one wide open. Well, Randy Shannon, the head coach of the Miami Hurricanes, was not able to accomplish his two goals, which would have given him a chance to win this game, which is zero turnovers and stay close in the first quarter. So what, is, what he did get is a valiant effort from his team all night long. They continue to scratch and fight, and that's what they'll have to take away from this experience. The public will not understand it. The team will. And believe it or not, they'll build on this effort, and they need to finish it strongly. Good football teams answer when they are scored upon. Great football teams put you away in the fourth quarter, and that's what Virginia Tech is trying to become. Well, Coach, the Hokies have 44 points on the board, but it was, again, a defensive play that turned this game around as we take a look at our best buy playbook. Great pressure here. Cameron... Cameron Chancellor on the pressure coming from deep, 11 yards deep as a free safety. Could not have been anticipated. The throw was well over the wide receiver, picked off by Macho Harris, who went down the sideline. Well, that's how Virginia Tech plays football, isn't it? They get after the quarterback, they create turnovers. They've had three takeaways now here in the second half alone, and that's well, the reason why they're up 44-14. There are two Cams over there, Cam Chancellor and Cam Martin. I get them confused because they each come off the edge, they each blitz, they each drop into coverage. They're marvelous football players. Martin is the outside linebacker. Chancellor's called a rover. He's the guy that came from deep and caused that turnover. This time a low line drive heads to the far side to Ryan Hill. And he picks it up at the 11-yard line. And that pays the price at the 20. Dustin Pickle made the stop. And we wonder as we take a look at Kirby Freeman with his helmet on if Miami was about to make a quarterback change. Quinn Kesnick? Yeah, Kyle Wright limping onto the field. He got banged up on that fumble uh, in, in deep in his territory. He stayed down on the field, limped off, was getting looked at by the trainer. Freeman was warming up. I really thought they were going to go to number seven, but Wright courageously comes back out for more. And he goes downtown looking for a big play. Broken up. Cam Chancellor came over and jumped in front of Sam Shields as safety help for Virginia Tech creates the incompletion. Cam Chancellor does everything. He's going to come from his spot on the hash. He's going to go in the direction I cannot draw right there and come all the way to the sideline to be there to help deep. That's his job in this case. We saw him blitzing on the previous highlight, causing the turnover, and this time we see him as a hash safety doing a great job on the sideline. To the ground in James. Maybe a half yard. And if the statisticians are kind enough to give him a half yard, Coach, that means instead of Miami being minus six yards of total offense here in the fourth quarter, that would take them to minus five. But the Canes, after having a disastrous first quarter, fought all the way back and made this a six-point game. And looked like they had Virginia Tech reeling a bit, but the Hokies have taken back over with five minutes to go. They have it wrapped up. Here comes the blitz again. Wright delivers a strike for a first down. 
Just about breaking free was Khalil Jones. And then a flag comes in very late. At the 36-yard line. I like Kyle Wright. I like the work that Patrick Nix has done with him. This guy has been coached. He knows what to do with the football when he's protected and has a chance. That was another safety blitz. They beat the man coverage, and he delivered it on the money. And now holding, though, holding. called against UM. It was a very late flag, which leads you to believe that the call was made right at about where Khalil Jones was brought down. So let's see what the call is. It's an odd thing. On the run, we have an illegal block in the back. 61 offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, but we play the down. Joel Figueroa, number 61, comes in here late, just trying to help out. He's downfield. When you're a big guy, you can't just dive in a pile and hit people in the back. Again, Miami's scratching, fighting, trying to get back in this game somehow, at least finish with dignity and just tripping over their own effort one time after another. With that being a spot foul, Miami actually picked up five yards on the play, so it's third and five. Wright flips it over the middle, right at the first down marker. The catch was made by Shields, and it looks to be good for a Miami first down out to the 31-yard line. It's not fun to play against anybody when they know you got to throw the football, but especially these guys, and he's being hit every play. And here is our Pacific Life game summary. In the first quarter, Miami with six yards, and they came right back in the second quarter and made it a game. And you can see how this flipped around from first quarter to second quarter, but the same could probably said between the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Look what happened on offense for Virginia Tech in the second. They were minus 12, and that's where Miami was allowed back in the game, at least temporarily. A delayed blitz came, and Wright couldn't get away. From the far side, Stephen Virgil came. And he came from probably about eight yards off the line of scrimmage well, and still got there. That was a corner blitz. The end of the sideline, the, the short corner, meaning the boundary corner, the guy coming from the right side of your screen. You'll see him coming here. He's the guy that you don't have a blocker for. The quarterback has to see that. He has to throw a hot, a hot route, a little hitch or something, get rid of the ball because you don't have a blocker for it. Right on second down and forever. Is forced to unload once again. Forty four fourteen Virginia Tech. Not only with a 30 point lead on the scoreboard but boy they have Kyle Wright. Really yeah. he is under fire on every single play. Well, this is ugly. This is ugly having to throw the ball every down against these guys. Bud Foster is so creative. He can come at you so many different ways. We've seen the free safety. We've seen the boundary corner. We've seen the nickel back. And we've seen the strong safety all coming after him unblocked. Third down at 16. Here comes the blitz again. Wright courageously stands in, takes another shot, and misses his target on the far side. But boy, that is one dirty football jersey. Yeah, this time they step up, they pick up the safety, but that leaves the outside guy completely clean. That's Pernell Sturdivant. Have not seen him yet tonight. Everybody getting a chance to play here and everybody getting to hit Kyle Wright. I was going to say, Kyle Wright knows who he is. Well, Matt Bosher launches a punt all the way down and rolls into the end zone. 2.49 to go in the fourth quarter. And Kyle Wright, the reluctant warrior tonight for Miami, but Virginia Tech in control. Forty-four, fourteen, Virginia Tech against Miami. Well, what is that? A little hot cider on the Virginia Tech sideline. It must be senior day. Somebody's mommy brought hot cider. The Canes shut down the running play at the line. Dustin Pickle is nowhere to go. One more. One more. And these guys get to enjoy a hot beverage with two and a half minutes to go. A hot beverage and a little NASCAR for Mr. Marchman. Still more impressed with the 7th in squat than I am the NASCAR doodad that he's, what do you call that thing? <laughs> <A> visor? 
Grant Brockmorton is now in at quarterback for Virginia Tech. Handing it off once again to Dustin Pickle who gets to the outside and has a first down and more. And stays in bounds to the 45-yard line. Dustin Pickle is the fourth string tailback. And he gets some time here. And again, Virginia Tech, their next game, the rivalry game with Virginia. And it comes up next Saturday at noon. It will either be on ESPN or ESPN2. The winner gets a chance to play for the ACC title and a BCS Bowl game. Every now and then a game comes along and you know you'd pay for it. You'd pay to get in. You'd buy a ticket for that game, whether you have an affinity for one of the teams or both the teams. I would love to see that game. Pickle. Not much. Pickle's a, half a, yard. Pickle's a terrific special teams player, and it's always great. The guys on the sideline and the people in the stands stay to watch a guy like Pickle get a chance to carry the ball a few times. And look, at people are not leaving, not, not in great numbers. They're here, and one reason is they like to see the Rudys of this world get a chance to play a little bit. A little over a minute to go. There is nothing like winning in the world, nothing. Especially in college football, right? As Especially you said, Especially in college football. College football, it's unlike any other sport where without a playoff system, as Pickle is blown up in the backfield, somehow stays on his feet. Tried to pull a Houdini and eventually too many white jerseys. Colin McCarthy brought him down. But we basically have a playoff system all season long in college football, and that creates these types of atmospheres. Our Chevy players of the game, the two quarterbacks, Kyle Wright, he played very well in the loss for UM, and Sean Glennon had to manage the game with Tyrod Taylor going out. So Glennon basically from the early stage of the second quarter on was the only quarterback that Frank Beamer had. That's right, and, and he did not start out well. He had several errant throws where he threw behind people, and he just kept coming at it, and he, he ended up with a nice evening. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Final play of the game, Dustin Pickle brought down, and that'll do it. So on senior day, 20 seniors leave the field for the final time here at Lane Stadium. Winners for the 40th time in that group's career. And they have a chance to become the first ever group to win 10 games per year as a senior class. All four years. All four seasons. A win today, 44-14 over the Hokies. That again is our final for Bill Carey and Quint Kesnick. I'm Bob Wachusen. So long from Blacksburg. We head back now to the studio.